Hey there. Welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, probably a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN, and presented by our friends at Prize Picks. I'm Ty Windish, one of your hosts, joined as always by my lovely compatriot, Rohan Kadi. Rohan, happy Monday, Monday afternoon, a little different for us, but honestly, very glad we didn't record earlier today because we got some news, perfect timing that we'll discuss, as well as the ongoing NBA Finals, before we do a 1 through 33 NBA mock draft, aka going through the Bucks two picks. We don't really care about the rest, which of course means the Bucks will draft, trade back and pick three times in the 40s and we won't be ready for it. But regardless, Rohan, how's it going? Doing well, doing well on a Monday afternoon, you know. Uh, summer feels like it's here. It's it's a good time all around. Great weather, you know. Uh, yeah. Festivals are popping up. It's, it's a good time, man. I can't lie. This is my favorite time of year. What a time to be alive. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, let's don't start wanna, with... I, I don't want to fully fully go into it. So. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good call. But not like us. Um, do you want to do good news or bad news from current events first? I don't think there is bad news. I agree. I think other people do. Let's do good news. Let's do ham. Because that's yeah. the most... So the if you're not aware, the Milwaukee Bucks, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, which... You know, take that for what it may, given the whole Lakers cycle. But uh, the Bucks are closing in. Uh, actually, no, it's Ham has agreed to join Milwaukee Bucks coach Doc Rivers staff. Uh, sources told ESPN on Monday. This broke like late morning in central time. The part that I found was interesting and honestly, I, I would say didn't expect is the report says specifically Darvin Ham will be Doc's top assistant, which is. Not, not that I don't think Dar- – obviously, Darvin Ham's held that role in Milwaukee before under Mike Budenholzer, and we can talk about how interesting it Has is he? that – Yeah. When? He, uh, he was Bud's top assistant. Oh, well, that was Charles Lee. Oh, was it? I thought it was – Yeah, I'm Charles not sure was how like they... associate head coach or something. Oh, I guess he? you're right. Yeah. Was he always, though? I think so. Oh, I guess uh, – oh, no, because Jenkins wasn't. He was no. like the guy – I still can't believe that he got a head coaching job and it worked. I but all amazing. anyone in Milwaukee just knew, like, yeah, he's the guy who makes sure Bud doesn't go on the court. And the Grizzlies were like, that guy. Uh, that shows you how little we know about NBA coaching. Whatever. He was a prominent uh, assistant coach for Bud. Uh, and now it's going to apparently be Doc's top assistant. I find this interesting because, you know, Dave Yeager, Rex Kalamian, Joe Prunty is kind of a big three of veteran assistant coaches on the staff. Is a pretty good, like, top three of veteran assistant coaches. But now – Darvin Ham, Ham Slam, which is on the way in. Rohan, what were your thoughts when you saw the news that uh, – I actually don't have to ask you because I told you this happened. But for, for the for the listeners, what were, what were your thoughts when you heard that uh, Darvin was back? I thought it was great. I thought it was great to hear. Uh, apparently, Darvin Ham had been considered for a bunch of other uh, coaching, uh, I think, I, reportedly. I can under, guess a couple. Uh, Mike Budenholzer in Phoenix. Uh, uh, Charles Lee in Charlotte, I would imagine. Yeah, but he wanted to come back to the Milwaukee Bucks. And I mean, no one on that coaching staff is there from his time in Milwaukee. But he's played for the Bucks. Obviously, he's won a title with the Bucks as an assistant coach. And I think most importantly, he he resonates with the players that are there. Yep. There's uh, a famous, uh, not really famous, but pertinent. Famous body. among Bucks people who follow the team way too closely. Yes, there's there's a Bobby Portis tweet that was making the rounds again from last year after they got eliminated uh, in the postseason where Bobby was talking about how, uh, what, what was the exact quote? I can pull it up right here, is that it, it was basically relating to, to Darvin Ham being like a big departure that no one really talked about too much uh, when talking about uh, uh, Darvin Ham being uh, let go and the, the postseason struggles of the Bucks. I can't find it right now. But yeah. It was it was basically saying, uh, yeah, Darvin happens in that absence that's not talked about enough. And that's a big reason why the Bucks fell off in terms of their defense, in terms of their overall scheme, fell uh, in in the postseason as well. It just a lot of a lot of things went wrong for the Bucks. And Bobby Portis personally thought that Darvin Ham's departure felt uh, played a big part in that. But now he's back. Long it was a tweet short. Yeah, it was a tweet. Yeah. At from B Portis time. Oh, so somebody replied to Bobby and said, MFs need to hop off the trade machine. Bobby said, LOL, they think in this 2K, only thing hurt us was D Ham leaving. That ain't talked about enough. 
Of course, hilariously, a couple months later, the Bucks did trade for Damian Lillard. So I guess John Horst also thought this was 2K. But uh, the point remains. Bobby said verbatim on Twitter that the ham leaving was not talked about enough. Yes. So he, he was a guy who was uh, reportedly very uh, well liked in the Bucks locker room. And that's just one piece of evidence towards that. So bringing him back first and foremost, I was like, yeah, that's great. This is a team that didn't have any direction last year that needed a lot of personalities to come together. And if there was one guy they can rally around, it's probably Darvin Ham. Yeah, Woj calls out specifically Giannis as a player who has a close relationship with Ham, although I feel like that's more the way it was written, it made me seem it made me feel it was more like a lot of players have a close relationship with him, including Giannis, because Giannis is of course the guy to talk about on the Bucks at any given point. But yeah, I think uh, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez is a lot of love for for Darvin Ham. So we talked before we recorded. I think we may feel differently about this. I am a little leery the Bucks could lose an assistant coach at some point as the staff continues to shape. And I believe the specific Woj phrase was that Doc Rivers had been looking to reshape his coaching staff. And that's it's a throwaway line in a short Woj article, which most people don't even read. But you could read that as being they're now done reshaping the coaching staff, which but maybe they are. Uh, there was, of course, the Bucks reported pursuit from, I believe, uh, Mark Stein, that they really wanted Sam Cassell. I would imagine this kills that. I don't think Sam Cassell is leaving one job for another to be, at most at this point, if Ham's going to be the lead, the third assistant coach. Think, yeah, he would. He would. He would be. Or the third demoted. coach. The third coach. Um, he would. It would not be an upgrade in terms of position. Well, but that's the question. Would it be because? So I think he's going to remain with the Celtics. Uh, was Lee the associate there too? I believe so. So I, I don't know if that's been formally moved yet, but obviously that job is now available in Boston. And I know when they brought in uh, Sam Cassell to work with Joe Missoula for the Celtics, it was like a big, we, we want someone who's been around for a long, long time as a coach to help Missoula, who obviously was new to it. And I, I think they probably still want that. Terry Stotts? Yes, except, except it went better, as most things did for the Celtics versus the Bucks this year, uh, unfortunately. But... Yeah, I would imagine Cassell is staying. I would imagine – I don't know which prompted the other. Like if the Bucks were like, oh, we can't get Cassell, we'll get Ham. Or if Ham was just available sooner and they were happy with that and the players are familiar, so they went that way. But either way, like I would assume Cassell probably just stays with a promotion in Boston and Ham is a buck. Also, like if they're not going to get rid of anyone, how many assistant coaches do you really need? I mean they still have a lot of assistant coaches. I mean Doc talks about how they had too many – they get rid of they three? They got two rows. They, have they got two rid of three, of right? Coach. I believe so, yeah. Or two. No, three. Oppenheimer, Backer, and Sidney Dobner. And now they've added another one back. So they're still only down two. I've got, I guess, Trevor Gleason really back? Remember Trevor Gleason? I don't know. Like, we'll see on that. But I'm more I'm more just thinking about when I think of the Bucks coaching staff, obviously Doc runs the show. Before this, I was thinking about, okay – it's Dave Yeager on offense and Rex Kalamian on defense. Those are like kind of the main – felt like we're the main guys. Now I get – maybe they'll still be doing those things, but Darvin's got a, a top position on the bench too. And then I, I then think of Joe Prunty, who has you know, orchestrated a lot of great NBA offenses, has been a Bucks stand-in head coach twice, a lot of experience. And then I think of Patrick Mutombo, who is like the up-and-comer of the group, who I noticed was like on the front lines talking to Doc and the other main guys quite a bit toward the end of the year in the playoffs. I, there's more coaches. I don't mean to slight any of them. If you're listening, I apologize. But these are the main players I think of when I think of the Bucks coaching staff. Do you think they will all be there still next year? I don't see why not. I, I, I it just feels like see. a lot of guys. I mean, not, yeah, not that it's too many for the coaching staff's sake. More that it's like Joe Prunty's going to be the fifth guy. Who knows? Or would it be four, fourth assistant? Right. Yeah, fourth assistant, fifth maybe, coach maybe on the staff. He's, maybe he's higher on the pecking order. We don't know. Like, well, then I mean, you could you know redo the question for Jaeger or Kalamian or whoever else. I guess. I mean, maybe as these other coaching staffs get formalized, uh, there's still the Cleveland Cavaliers job. There's the Lakers job, which <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, Mikhaius and Steve are going to be the assistants there. <laughs> Dan Hurley said no, uh, by the way, yeah. for, the, for the listeners. The uh, Lakers' godfather offer was less than what Kentucky offered him? 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's less than what was reported was the Godfather offer. Yeah, he, they lied uh, about I think Woj was saying like ten years, a hundred million dollars or something previously. I saw eight eight years, a hundred million was the figure. Eight I years, a hundred million. That's crazy. And then apparently the final offer, according to Woj, was six years, seventy million. Crazy. I think it was seventy-two. No, it, well, either way, it was like way less than the top of the market that NBA coaches have been getting in the last two years. He would have been, I think the, the thing was, he would have been the sixth highest paid coach. And any That's time what Woj had... said, but I think someone did the math and he actually would have been like eighth. Awesome. I mean, it depends probably, like, a Doc's figure is better or at least comparable per year. I mean, he got 40 for four, but it's really 40 for like three and a half. Yeah. So it is comparable to to Doc Rivers. And anytime you can leave a two-time title winner to go be Doc Rivers level in the NBA, you have to. I just – I mean, I can believe it because the Lakers are notoriously cheap. They're house poor. They're the only house poor owners. Like, this is their business. That, and it's it. This is all they have. And so there's no like – I think they'd be better at it. Well, they're they're like good at some parts of it. They're weirdly good at scouting. Maybe that was just a, a, a cup check thing. I mean, they just got Reeves. I, I, that is I, true. Think, they, I think they're legitimately good at like the, the funny thing about the Lakers. This has always been the funniest thing about the Lakers for like the last, I don't know, eight years is like they're so much better at like the around the margin stuff than they are at the big picture stuff. And they nailed the big picture stuff for like one year when they got, which was like, you know, kind of fluky. Like LeBron wanted to go to LA, whatever. And Anthony Davis and them were a good pairing. And then they immediately ruined the rotation as soon as they won it all. But they've continued to be like, oh, here's you know the 45th pick who's going to be a big contributor for us for the next couple of years. But like, also, here's Russell Westbrook. <laughs> yeah. Like they 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 had they've been a, such a weird it's like you would expect a team like the Spurs or something to be doing all this. And obviously a lot of teams have had success doing that, but you wouldn't you think the Lakers, you just think of like the big names and the big power moves and their franchise has been best at like all the margin stuff, which like is which is why I years. said they should be. You'd think they'd be better at it because I was referring to the business part of it. Like, yeah, the the bus family is not doing scouting. Do you know there's six of them that work there? Are you serious? I thought there were yeah, like six three. Of them. No, there's six. You know what? Jared, do Doctor Bus, got around. <laughs> he he did. Yeah. Let's move on. Um. Back to the Bucks. The coaching staff, though, looks great. I feel great about the coaching staff. Even if they lose one of those guys, I would, assu- I would assume, I would guess, and I'm not, again, this is not an ill will toward this person, I would guess if one goes, it's Prunt Dog. Because he was not the one picked by Doc. Exactly. Yes. Neither was like, Matumbo, but he's like, you know, Prunty has been like around the second or third guy on staffs for years now. So it wouldn't surprise me if Charles Lee – Buds, whoever the Lakers end up hiring, calls him up and was like, hey, you know, we'd love you to be our number two guy. Will you come do that? Probably not the Lakers because they probably wouldn't pay enough. But, you know, maybe the Suns who are reportedly just throwing money everywhere, maybe they would do it. Um, or I mean, maybe a, re- a restructuring but Bud hasn't Dallas. Worked with, but Bud hasn't worked with. Yeah, Dallas would make sense. Bud yeah. hasn't worked with Prunty. So, you know, usually the prior relationships matter too. But clearly not always given that Ham did not pick Phoenix if they were even in play, which honestly I'm shocked. I, I honestly wouldn't be shocked I'm about it. I think, by that. I think it speaks to his relationships with the players more than the coaching staff, which I also, think is great. Like, I think it bodes well for this hire. Yes. Also, like Doc knows everyone. I think the Doc of it matters. Like, I think Doc probably came through and closed this. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around the block for a while now. So, I mean, I'm sure he has. A, I mean, you know, obviously wasn't coaching this year, but has been a head coach in the league at the same time as Darvin, and of course was. When Darwin was an assistant, he was a head coach. Like, I'm sure they have some relationship. Like, I, I agree. I think the players are probably what puts it over the edge. But I'm sure the doc of it all is a big factor when he was publicly like, yeah, we want to bring in even more. Which honestly is like a kind of cool thing from Doc. Too. Might as well. I, I don't know where they're going to put him, uh, what row. They have, to start um, a, they have to start a third row. He's got to go to Phoenix, right? Like, some of these guys have to go to Phoenix. You would think so. Or Charlotte. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the Bucks are just like they're they're kind of hoarding them. But I think it's cool. I like that Doc is like basically establishing an awesome staff. Like I think it's first, it's cool. The Bucks ownership is giving them the resources to do so. I assume this is not cheap. And like nobody would have batted an eye if they didn't make another major addition to their coaching staff. I mean, obviously Doc saying they wanted to go get someone sparked it. But like if he has, if he doesn't say that, 
we would have been like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like, there's if, a few people. It it's a good staff. If it was announced that Darvin Ham was going to Phoenix, we would have been like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> and awesome. I think good for them. I, that's I a saw, great hire for them. I I did see some like non Bucks people almost laugh about like, oh, Doc and now Darvin Ham, like, what are they building in Milwaukee? Which of course is just like. As we'll talk about with our other topic before the mock draft, the Bucks always get shafted in, the, in whatever angle possible when people are talking about the NBA. But like Darvin Ham, for all accounts, was a great assistant. I don't think he was a very good head coach in LA. I know a lot of Bucks people right now, like fans I see, are making excuses for him. I don't think he did a good job. I, I, I think he did poorly as a head coach in Los Angeles. It's a different job. I think you can be a very good assistant and not a good head coach. I think you can start off as not a very good head coach and then improve later. Now, Frank, do I think he had a good situation? No, of course not. I think he had a very hard situation. Maybe the hardest job in the league, not in terms of like, you know, getting wins out of the roster. They're not the 30th best roster, but in terms of dealing with the Lakers of it all, the LeBron of it all, et cetera. It's a very difficult job, very high standards uh, and very, you know, the resources don't match, match the standards if you look at their actual roster these days. Um, and he could get another job in a couple of years and be awesome. I don't think he did a good job. I don't think that means he's not a very good assistant coach. I, I feel very strongly that he is based on what we've seen from him on Bud staffs over the years, based on what the players have said. I think that he'll even get everyone even more on the same page, which is exactly what the Bucks need after how tumultuous last year was. And I can't believe he's not a son because that's exactly what Bud needs. Exactly. With these three players, like they really need someone to, you know, maybe maybe Bud's just hip now. Maybe he took the year off and he's real into, I, I don't even know what these guys are into, but maybe he's into it and he can just do it taking, himself. Taking but jumpers at the club. I could actually see Bud doing that. It's a very funny image. Have we ever seen Bud shoot a basketball? I've, yes. I don't think I've ever. Yes, have we? we have. He, there was I a... There was a there was a game a few years ago when he was the coach. It was co- they went to a uh, they went to a, a prison, I think. Oh, and that's right. Yeah, there was like a coaching staff basketball game for just like an enrichment opportunity, and we saw yeah. blood like lighting it up from deep. Yeah, I, I I don't even remember how it looks, but I would imagine it'd be pretty silky. It was clean. I'll tell you, yeah. it was clean. Yeah, it was mechanically sound as you would expect. Maybe Bud should have been the shooting coach. Anyway, um, I said a bunch of stuff. What are your thoughts on? Ham, head coach, but all this stuff. I think I think it's good. I mean, obviously, with the way the season went last year, you just want some sort of stability. And I think that's one thing that Doc was looking for coming into the season is just in just being able to rally these guys, make them make them sure that they know this is a stable situation. And I think this almost works better than a Sam Cassell type hire, which this is nothing against Sam Cassell. Obviously, he's a great uh, coach in his own regard. Uh, Bucks legend Sam Cassell. Uh But just a guy who not only has like the acumen and has done this, uh, a title winning assistant coach in this role, he's done it with this team and with these players, like obviously not Dane, right? And obviously not like it's there's four guys, right? Five guys left. There's there's Giannis, there's Chris, there's Brooke, there's Pat, there's Bobby. And we'll see what happens with the Nasus. But that's it. And yeah. That's it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's everyone left from the title team, which is a lot. But like, I mean, obvi- when you compare it to a team like Phoenix, who they only have one guy from their finals run, uh, that's crazy. And they were the younger team. Exactly, it's crazy. But you just need some guy who has a good relationship with these guys already to be able to calm them down, to be able to get them w- like integrated with this coaching staff. Is I think it's a great addition. I think it's a, it's an amazing addition. There's a reason Doc, or Doc, uh, Darvin Ham was selected to be the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, right? Like he had a great, great resume. He during their interview process, they must have seen something that completely stood out to them. Still only fifty years old. Exactly. Uh, there, there's, there's a, there's a great coach there. Obviously, like the the people who get these head coaching jobs don't get it just for nothing, right? They do it because of a long standing like. Uh, pedigree in this league just being able to have that resume to be able to uh, articulate well how you're going to be able to do this and doc i mean i keep saying doc darvin ham was one of ham the, was one of those guys like i don't think that should be taken lightly i agree it didn't work out well in la he wasn't the best in la he wasn't well suited for that job it was a top job but there was still a reason that he was picked to be a head coach so i think as much experience as you can get and as much talent as you can get on your coaching staff i think is amazing 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, and I think it, I think it's going to be good. I also, my last thought on this, I think certainly it's great for the players that remember him. And obviously, you know, he's, I'm sure he's going to do well with Dame and everyone else too. Like he's been around the league for so long. I'm sure he has relationships with guys he hasn't coached before. I, I've, I don't think this necessarily means all five or six of those guys are going to be back. No, absolutely. Like if you knew, if you knew, hey, we got to trade one of these bigs. We got a tough, a tough move. It's going to reverberate through the franchise a little bit. Would it maybe ease it a little bit if you brought back Darwin too? Maybe ease the transition a little bit? You yeah. know what I mean? Like I think you could read that either way. Uh, that's no, all absolutely. I'm saying. I don't think because I've seen this like, oh, I guess everyone's coming back, whatever. Man, we'll see. John Horst has not been a very passive general manager uh, when there's clear needs and, and the roster right now clearly does have some needs and they probably won't fill them all through, you know, two low draft picks and a couple of vet mins. So. I think, yeah, when I when I said there's like five or six players. No, not, I, I know. Yeah. I just wanted to I wanted to get that thought out there, too. For sure. I don't think I would be, frankly, upset if all of those guys came back. Yeah, uh, I that, would be a little that upset would be too. an issue. So, yeah. Uh, for sure. But like, I could see that I could see that angle as well. Trying to like ease that transition, keep as much familiarity as you can. Like, yeah, I, I totally see that. Let's talk about another transition. Drew Holiday to Portland to Boston. A lot of horrible takes flying around about this right now. Bucks picked the wrong guy, Rohan. <sighs> it's, it's a lot. Obviously, this comes as the Celtics go up 2-0. On the on the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals, and last time that happened, I mean, it, obviously the team that went up two hundred one. So you know, uh, that's a joke, by the way. It was Phoenix Bucks twenty twenty one. Yeah, but also I I, it, I do think it's a, not funny. I'm I'm very surprised that we're doing all these dumb Drew takes instead of one celebrating Drew having a great Finals. Two, Porzingis left that game clearly hobbled. Uh, and like, Joe Missoula said he'll, he's fine, though. And Porzingis said he'll die out there. They can say all they That's want. That's a crazy thing to say, by the way. When you're uh, good for, says good you're for fine, he's, he said I'll die out there is crazy. Good for Tingus Pingus. I, I saw what I saw. Like, he clearly aggravated something to some degree. He was not moving well at all. It was clearly bothering him. His gait was horrible. Porzingis being banged up totally could help crack that series open again. Look at game one. Yeah. It's it's it was Kristaps Porzingis that that I mean went. right after he went out that's when the Mavs kind of went on a run to close the game and got it to what it was I think seven well not fouling down seven with like thirty five seconds left was wild to me by the way I just like at that point it's like what are you doing though it's it's the finals I mean yeah, that's true a guy a guy misses two free throws which Luca did himself earlier in that game you hit a three it's a four point game where you can have a shot. From that point, I mean, it's a very long odds. It's not a good shot. I was just, I, I have not seen many times in a playoff game period when it's like just over two possessions and you have more than a shot clock left and you're not still trying. No, that's I was fair. a little surprised. I mean, they kind of pressured the ball and then just like gave up when they didn't get a steal right away. Anyway, um, th that's all unrelated. I, I, I don't think this series is over. I, I agree with your your point about Bucks Suns in twenty one. But the Drew Holiday part of it all, he is the odds-on favorite, I think, right now for finals MVP. He's playing very, very well is the, the long and the short of it. Uh, he is basically thriving in the dunker spot. Uh, the Jason Tatum discourse has been horrible, by the way. That's a whole separate thing. I don't understand what anyone is, is talking about ever. I, I find myself wanting to be on Twitter less than ever before just because I think everything that is said Wait, is what stupid. part of the Discord, uh, discourse do you not like? It's just everyone's just shitting on him constantly. I mean, he's not. He's not shooting well. He's for yeah. sure not shooting well. He's not playing that poorly though. Yeah, but it's just it's the shoot, and it, I think it's the fact that it's the second finals in a row. Yeah, I mean that's fine. They're up too well. They've been awesome. Yeah, like it just feels like we're moving goalposts because we don't want anyone to be happy about Boston, which I get it. Yeah. But I just think I don't it's a little be happy about Boston. I, I mean, don't even want to give them any credit. Anyone on them any credit? Which again, I, I get it, but I, it just comes off as weird to me. Fair. I get it. I think he's playing well overall. The shot's just not falling. But he is feeding Drew right now. Drew's averaging 19 points, 9.5 rebounds, 4 assists in the finals, only 1.5 stocks, but shooting 65% from the field, 44% from three. 
just what is your what is your take? Forget what everyone else is saying on Drew's success this playoffs. Good for him, man. Like, yeah, like it's not. He, I, I think people need to make. Like, they need to hear it. He didn't choose any of this, right? Yeah, like he he didn't choose any part of this, right? Like Drew, he was a guy who was clearly for Bucks fans. Like he was a guy who was clearly upset about being traded away from Milwaukee. Can you can you think of any star players like whether you want to consider like Drew a star? He's a two time All Star, whatever. Like a very very good play, a prominent player saying, "Hey, by the way, I'm upset that I'm leaving Milwaukee. I'm upset that Milwaukee is choosing to get rid of me." Like first yeah. and foremost, like that's like just amazing on its own. And and two, like he didn't choose to do any of this. Like he cho- like he got traded to Portland, and then the Celtics traded for him. And one of the stupid, like they made two ridiculous trades this past summer. And yeah. I don't know how they're getting away with it. It's it's crazy to me. Like what for for Porzingis they gave up Marcus Smart, Mike Muscala, and who was the other guy? I don't even know. Uh, and a second round pick for Porzingis and two firsts. Like they 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 love the distressed asset move. They've been winning on that. They got Brogdon the year before who they were able to step ladder up and do this year because it's like oh he's kind of hurt, he makes a lot of money. You know, a lot of these teams get scared about this stuff now. The teams who don't have one. I mean, the Bucks do this too. That's how they got Dame, but it's it's been successful. I I I'm more open to the Bucks looking at quote unquote stars now, but to do what the Celtics have done with Drew, not to like add them as a conventional star, if that makes sense. This is the supercharged Aaron Gordon move. That's what this is. Yes, he's he's basically playing that role. He also, I, it's funny. I, th- I actually think it it is more of a. I mean, like the role thing is Aaron Gordon. He plays more like Bruce Brown did on the Nuggets, but that's all he has to do. Like, all right, guard guard a guy in the perimeter, like cut in open space on offense. Yeah, that's take open it. shots. Like <laughs> that's not what he was asked to do on the Bucks. And that's no. like that's another and that's piece never of the that's book. never what he would have. I saw was it that Sam guy from CBS Sam Quinn was like, I think they should have gotten Terry Rozier and stuck around with everyone. What? Do you think Terry Rozier would have the ball over Drew Holiday in the half court? I don't. No. Like you can't just what if we just had a bunch of worse players and then told Drew to do less? Like, it doesn't that's not how this works? Like, there's always a totem pole, there's always a pecking order. It's Giannis, and then for the Bucks, it was basically Chris and Drew next to each other. I someone told me the other day he was the third option. He was not a top offensive option. He was a co second option, like very clearly. Absolutely, like that's not even a question. And he probably I would I would venture to guess if you looked at and I didn't. But if you looked at like the number of touches and touch time, he probably came in higher than three most years. Because oh, he, was, he was their point guard. Like he yeah. had the ball a ton. And you watch Boston night and day. He, he, he plays like Bruce Brown. Like again, I'm not saying that to denigrate Drew, his role. He's playing like in a, the best possible Bruce Brown. Like, again, I said supercharged Aaron Gordon. I'm not calling him a role player. But when we see these like fringe all-star guys – Put on roles on stacked teams where they are asked to do role player things. They look amazing, for sure, a hundred percent. Like it's a completely different role, right? Like the the in Boston, there's a clear pecking order, like you mentioned. There's clearly guys above him in that pecking order that just weren't there in Milwaukee. There was one clear guy ahead of him in Milwaukee. That's yep. Giannis. In Boston, there's two. I would say there's three. Three, yeah. I feel like Derek White's on the ball a lot more than Drew. I'm not saying he's better. I'm saying the way they play. For sure. I think like, he's leaned on more to create. For sure, for sure. But like it, it's almost like the co fourth option in, in Boston yeah. compared to the co second option in Milwaukee. Like it's it's a completely different role. He didn't choose any of this. He's a good guy who deserves good things. Yep. And I think even even if you want to say, even if you disagree with the Derek White thing. He is a co-third option with three other guys versus a co-second option with one other guy or with two other guys, three total sure. guys. It's like it's him, Porzingis, and White behind the Jays. Like that's so much lighter on. And I think Porzingis the same thing. Porzingis looks awesome. Porzingis looks better defensively again when he's healthy, which has always been a thing. But I think that I've ever seen just because like offensively his life now is easy. Like their their offense, they just like go to guys every so often because I feel like. It's like, oh, he hasn't had the ball for a while. 
Let's let Porzingis do a little post spin. He hasn't. Let's let Derek White shoot some corner threes. They have a really good flow right now. It makes me sick, but they're playing re- very well. Yeah, it, it it hurts me to my soul. But it's but tr- we've talked about it. it. Doesn't hurt me as much. I I don't hate any other players. That helps. I just hate the I hate the the organization. That's yeah, I do too. But I, I you know that makes it almost easier. What? Just to say, like, oh, I hate Boston. Like, I don't have to root against individual players. Just like, nope, the entire Celtics. Nope. No, I, I do too. I'm not saying I'm not telling you I like them, but what I'm t- with like the org. But I'm telling you is like, I'm not sick over them having like if they win the finals, I'm not going to be sick because I we've talked about it many times. I find it hard to hate Jason Tatum. Seems like a cool guy. Jalen Brown said some very Different stupid story. things. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like Derek White, if you hate Derek White, I think you should go outside. It's a good take. And and of course, Drew. I hate Pritchard just because of he's Pritchard. Yeah. When he popped off after he hit that buzzer beater, it was at halftime or like the third quarter. It was like the – it graded on me. I just – I don't I, – I hope I hope Luca and Kyrie got something in them. Kyrie. Luca yeah. has been pretty good. Kyrie is a bum. I did not realize he had lost nine straight against Boston no, going into the finals. Against, yeah, going into the finals. No, yeah. it's 11 now. So ever since he stepped on Lucky. They really stood on business with that, and I kind of respect it. I kind of hate it. I kind of. I, I feel like it has nothing to do with lucky. Like this is like several different teams. I mean, obviously the Jays have been there, but like again, if it was any other franchise, I'd be like, that's so sick. Yeah, like imagine if imagine if Kyrie stepped on stepped on the box logo, Benny the Bull, and the Bulls ran. No, I'm saying like a neutral party. Yeah, and neutral the Bulls party. ran off eleven straight wins. And I guess you hate the Bulls too. It's like the like, TNT just, Bulls type thing. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was just fun. It was like a fun, fun to observe. But yeah, you'd be like, "Oh, that's sick." Um, but now people are just sick, and I, I get it. I hate the Celtics too. I don't think they're my most hated NBA team right now. Who is? I hate the Sixers fan base more. Uh, I see. I respect the Sixers fan base more. May I guess? I don't know. I don't. I'm not saying I like. I'm saying I respect. No, them I know. More. I, I think know, I, I think they're better fans than Celtics fans. I know we have some Celtics listeners. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about you. I I hate the Heat more. Just because there's just more history. That's more, fair. Actually, there's that. not really. There's not really. It's pretty equal history. It is pretty. It is pretty equal. The Heat. The Heat losses have been way more embarrassing though. Yeah. But that's just context dependent. I guess I hate the Pacers more. I hate Pacers players more than any other team. That is fair. That is true. I don't hate that many teams anymore. I mean, you just named like five. But I said I don't hate a couple of them. Okay. The Sixers, it's like not even... It's almost like I feel bad. It goes back to like the post-process. Like they were just the worst back then. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like now they've kind of been beaten back down again. I mean, they're they're all like, oh, we have all this cap space. Oh, we're going to take in DeWar DeRozan. It's going to be sick. Like, whatever. Their whole ex- – they've never made an Eastern Conference Finals like it, since 01. Doesn't, no one cares about them. No. And the Heat, like – I actually don't know if I hate their players. No, I don't know. I, 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 I hate how the Heat make me feel more than I hate the Heat. I think that's true. I think that's fair. I the think heat it's like, like exposes what's a, wrong with you. It's a result of playing the Heat, not the Heat themselves. Yeah. Because like I think Jimmy's kind of cool. Did you see what Jimmy said about uh, Cam Brink? What? Uh, I, all I, this isn't. It's not really about her. It's. I it's, was gonna say it's not about her. This isn't it's as like salacious. Tw- as it seems. Twenty-two uh, looks good. In twenty-two purple and looks gold. good in purple and gold. Yeah. He's number twenty-two. That's the guy. He is. He is thirsting for other teams because Pat won't give him the bag. I do think this is actually a serious thing. I don't think the pissing contest matters at all. Jimmy has a very well documented history of being very upset if you don't pay him. Oh, absolutely. Why That's do you think he's super not real. a why do you think the why like his last few teams didn't like he's not there anymore? It's three in a row. It Bulls is. wouldn't give him an extension, the Wolves wouldn't give him an extention, and then so the, he was a free agent. Over me? He was a free I think he might have still been able to get paid there, but the Heat did it faster or something. I don't remember. But yeah. They were like nickel and dime him and the Heat came in. Yeah. Or it was a sign and trade. So I guess they yeah, had the Sixers to just willingly give. That's crazy. It's a crazy Got decision. Got the, what was it, Josh Richardson or something? Yeah. Crazy. Oof. Um Who ended anyway, up back in Miami. That's always how it goes. Yeah. 
if they traded, if they did a trade where they sent out Jimmy Butler and got back Donovan Mitchell, would you fear Miami more or less or the same? I think the same. I would say less. I think it makes way more sense as a player. I I think there's an aura about Jimmy that has made them – he made Heat culture real. I think people yeah. forget Heat culture was like a joke in 2016. Like it's always the players that do it. I think Bam's a great player. It's, it's not the same. Yeah. J- no, Jimmy took it to a whole, whole new level. I mean they looked pretty pathetic without him in the playoffs. Yeah. So – I, uh, I I mean, Donovan Mitchell, I think, is a great player. I think he's a, and he's a horrible fit with Rozier and Hero, obviously. But like him, and Bam, Bam. him and Bam makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I would fear them less. I think just the shooting ability from Donovan Mitchell, just I, yeah. that's why I keep it around the same because you, you gain some, you lose some. Man, Jimmy in the playoffs has been a, just a – he's shot pretty well there. I yeah, know he's, he's the reason Drew is not a Milwaukee Buck. Yeah. Just to bring yeah. it full circle. Yeah, but we I think we agree. I think we're in agreement on Drew. Yeah, like it's fine. He didn't ask for this, like it's fine. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actively root against a player who helped deliver the box of championship. I'm not gonna do it. No, I agree. And like And again, I think too, I, I think there's I, I was worried I could feel like if he flourished, like I mean I think we talked about this way back when the Celtics got him. Like, oh now you're gonna be good in the playoffs. I've seen a lot of this like Either pushback on what the Bucks fans have said accurately about how he was in Milwaukee, or like anger now, but it just seems so obvious to me. It's it's such a function of the role. It absolutely is. It's apples uh, he's and oranges. Just, he's just like it's right there for him, and you know credit to him for. I mean, the threes are never a given, but he went from like pull up threes to just wide open corner threes, wide open shots at the basket. He's moving really well in space. Like he's made some tough shots too. I think those will come and go, but he is just absolutely feasting on wide open looks. And again, it sounds like I'm denigrating him. That's just what's happening out there. Uh, and credit to him for taking advantage. But um, I, I don't think this is like, oh, he got out from under the bucks and now he can shoot. I think it's just like, yeah, life is pretty easy when you're the fourth or fifth guy in the Celtics. Yeah, like you can, it's easier for him to make open threes compared to step back contested threes that he felt like he was able to yeah. take as a member of the box. Or had to, or had to take. I, yeah, I don't think. I, I he, said, never, you, he felt like, he yeah, felt like. Okay, not the, he not felt like, I was like, I don't think he actually had to no, take. No, I know. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Let's talk about our friends at Prize Picks, and then we'll do our full, thir- full 33, our first round plus mock draft. Uh, Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. All you do is pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. And what's been really fun is to add a little extra spice to the NBA playoffs. You can go with the stars. If you get a star in your lineup, you can get a payout boost on your winnings, up to 10% payout boost for those starred players on the board. And it's been very fun. I would recommend kind of a mixed NBA, WNBA slate on the finals nights. I had just a down-to-the-wire Aces, Sparks, Mavs, Celtics play. And I ended up being like one short of like three different projections. Cameron Brink, 8.5 points, went more. I always could do more than. Less than is just not fun to me. She had 8 out of 8.5. I think Jalen Brown had 32 points, rebounds, assists. The projection was 32 and a half. They were grilling me. Asia Wilson, I think, was one and a half below her points and rebounds. And then Porzingis fell a little short, but he had left the game. So that kind of makes sense there. But anyway, it it just adds a little extra, you know, with the Bucs not playing and unfortunately no Wisconsin WNBA team. It's nice to have a little bit of a rooting interest in the games outside of just, you know, storylines and stuff. So uh, I would recommend Asia Wilson whenever she plays because she is absolutely dominating the WNBA right now. I mean, also, far and away the best player. Insider t- opinion here. Kelsey Plum, more than on whatever, are usually a good bet. She plays like the whole game. I know. It's Asia crazy. plays a lot too. But I'm watching the Aces and I'm like, is Kelsey Plum ever going to check out of this game? She's just always in the game. She's getting knocked over. It doesn't matter. She just keeps playing. Um, so credit to Kelsey Plum. And then, of course, on the NBA side – I, I I haven't I, – I went more than game one, didn't touch him game two. I'm fading Kyrie the rest of the playoffs. I'm done. It's, it's and which, 
which means everyone listening, go and take the more than because he's going to have 50. But I personally, I, I, I'm i not a believer anymore. I think Lucky's got his revenge. And Luca's always a safe bet. And the Celtics. Lucky is at the Celtics it's hard backcourt. To know. Like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but download the app today, Prospects app, and use code Eurostep for that first deposit match up to $100 to get in on the action with us. Let us know your winning plays and, and how you're doing on prize picks. We always like to hear when someone notches a big W. That's code Eurostep, all one word, for a first deposit match up to $100 on the prize picks app. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, Rohan. Should we do this draft? Let's Are you excited? Are you I am ready? excited. I'm very Let's excited. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're here. Amazing. Uh, you can't see it, but I can see it. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm playing into that time. I know. You're doing great. So Thank you. what we're going to do is we're going to kind of burn through the first round and and three more picks so we can do both of the Bucks picks. And this is more – this is not us trying to be experts. This is – I would say I approach these as like a little predictive, but more so this is what this team should do, Right. Is that is that also how you're approaching this? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's like based on their needs. What do you think they they should do? Yeah, I think it's more should than will. Obviously, we're not draft insiders. We're not draft experts. Although we've been doing more on the draft for you I know the Bucks having their two this, picks. This is chalk. Could you imagine? Can you actually? A perfect. Imagine? That'd be amazing. I mean, we're also uh, not taking into into account trades. So. Yeah, so it won't be. Well, I mean, the pit the picks could be the same, but yeah, we're not going to do trades at least for this one. If if a lot of people say, "Hey, we, we want you guys to get wild and do trades," maybe we'll do trades. Maybe we'll do a live one with trades. Let Ooh. us know if you want that. That could be fun. That could be. But anyway, for now, the Atlanta Hawks the first pick so in the twenty twenty four NBA draft. On a pick. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think that's more fun than switching off. Interestingly, I'll have to relay this. I'll be the assistant GM, I guess. Our team need here, center oh, I, need I is pulled, severe. I have it pulled up, don't worry. Oh, you have it. Okay. Yeah. Center need is severe. I don't really understand that with Capella and Okongru, but it fits the narrative of I want to go Alex Sar here. I want to go Alex Sar here as well, just barely, not because of like the center severe thing. But no, mostly, I, I think we'll kind of ignore this based on that first one. I don't know if these team needs are very well. Done. It was more of a defensive. Thing, right mm. like they need defense and honestly like who knows what they're going to do this summer are they going to trade trey are they going to trade Dejounte murray you take the player with the highest upside and the highest floor like and that's that's alex Starr. maybe not the highest floor but he has the tools to just be a monster an absolute monster right like he's yes. a, he's this almost seven foot guy who can just handle he can shoot he can defend like that's that's the kind of guy you want yeah i just i think he's the best prospect i think he's really the only one i'd be comfortable taking at one so I think it works. That if, I think if they trade one of or neither of Trey and Dejounte, either way, you're like, oh, let's pair a star ish guard in the case of Dejounte with uh, this super young center who they'll be able to spoon feed buckets to. I think it's great fit wise. I also think he's just the prospect I feel best about. So let's do it. Let's lock in Alex Sar with the number one overall pick. I love it. Bum 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 bum. Next up, the Washington Wizards. The draft gets super weird right here. It really does because I I was thinking about this. And for the Wizards, I mean, what do they need? Everything. Good players. They need they need good players. They need everything, right? Here's This the thing. board is wild. I'm on the consensus board, Fanspo. I don't know which one you pulled up. I, uh, I'm not with all of these consensus rankings here. No? No. I mean, Risha, I'm not a Risa Shea guy. We'll get to. They still have Topic third, which I think he'll probably fall a little bit. But Castle six feels a little high to me. Klingon nine feels a little low. I actually kind of like Klingon here for the Wizards. I kind of like the guard here. I really? kind of. I mean, I think going... one one way or the other. I think center or guard. I like the wing. I like they have some good, decent young wings right now. I think either a ball handling guard or a center makes sense. Yeah, so that's why I was thinking kind of like a Reed Shepard here. Don't hate Reed Shepard here. I don't know if he's going to be on ball enough. I don't know either, but you just need – you need some – you need a guard. You need like a shooting guard. What about – what or – Dillingham? No. No, I, I'm not I, – I mean I would get it if they did it, but I personally would not take him at two. Would you go Castle here then? Can I pitch you on a Castle or even a Holland? I don't know if you can pitch me on a Holland. Uh, Castle is the other guy I was thinking of. Not a shooter, but hey, you got De- – Kispert's a very good shooter. Um, 
We have some other guys who are working on their jumpers, but I'm not going to make this pick because of, you know, whatever, how Kyle Kuzma or whoever looks. The, the thing with Castle is, like, apparently he's not working out with teams that already have point guards. We don't have a point guard that we care about. So, by Jordan? Cool. Well, I mean, it's, I think Castle wants to play as a point guard. I don't think he said starting point guard. I think he, I think he did. And also, we're the one. Did he? he wants to say? I mean, uh, who's going to pick him if he has to start at the one? I don't know. I think like who's up know. next? Houston? They're not. All right, he's not going there. San no. Antonio? Maybe. I guess you better be a spur, buddy. Fingers get, crossed. Get ready to learn. Churro. Churro. I was going to say. <laughs> um, let's just say, hey, we're, we're uh, the franchise. Oh, we're going to do what we want. We'll let you handle the ball. We, do, we suck. Yeah, should we do Castle? I like Castle. I think, I think Castle Ca- would be a great wizard. Castle? Oh, don't say that. I, I think Castle... What's wrong I think with he that? Be, it makes it sound like he's going to have charges filed. <laughs> I, I do see that. Um, that are Hornets. But I, I think he he's a player a lot of people agree like already a very good defender, good ball handler, strong player, big guard. Like if he could shoot, could be a real star. If I'm the Wizards, I'm like, yeah, sign me up. We could use like just the baseline version of this player. Like we have no defense right now outside of uh, who's the rookie from last year? Why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Koulibaly. Yeah, uh, outside of Koulibaly, who was a rookie. Like we could just use more defensive big guards. But also, like if he pans out, he'd be really good there. So I like Castle. Yeah, let's do Castle. I'm good with that. I like it. All right. Stefan Castle, six foot seven point guard to the Wizards. Castle got, number two feels crazy. But does it when you look at the rest of I mean, again, here's Reese Shea, Topich, who has a partially torn ACL, Reed Shepard, and, and who's a six foot one. has a negative wingspan also. A negative wingspan and, can, and can't shoot also. Has been a bad three point shooter. But just those minor things. Reed Shepard, who's a six foot one, probably not ball dominant guard. Modis Buzelis, who we're going to talk about pretty soon here, six foot ten, we're pretty going to talk about him right wing, here, probably. And then Dillingham, six foot one guard. Holland is like I think a less attractive kind of version of Castle, but less polished. Anyway, the Rockets are on the clock. You're talking about Buzelis. I don't know where to go here. There's a rumor they like big guys, um, but they still want one. I hey, don't know if it Brooke makes Lopez a ton of sense. Is here, man. Brooke Lopez, but I mean, it's like uh, as we talked about with the Brook thing. They've obviously got Shangun, who's like a young star there. And then they traded for Steven Adams, who they anticipate being able to play this year. Extension eligible, by the way, Shangun. That's interesting to monitor. And apparently these might be old reports, but may not want to offer a full max. He does not strike me as a Ime Udoka player. Really doesn't, right? The rangy bigs was his thing in Boston. That is not Shangun. Anyway, I, but neither is Klingon. So I, I don't think they would like take Klingon and then trade Shingu. Like that's not – he's not Robert Williams 2.0. Um, so we talked about a couple of these players a little bit already. Like I think a, a toe pitch to me makes no sense. I think like, – think The problem with the Rockets is what do they need? I think they just like need stars? a wing. I think they need a wing. I mean they didn't even have minutes for Cam Whitmore last year. I think that was, that was more – They have a Thompson game. twin. They have a – I mean – I. They're not dying for long wings. I mean, they have Jabari Smith Jr. I'm telling you, I mean, I would not consider him to be a wing at all. You think he's just a straight big? I think I he think plays he some minutes at the four. I think he is a four, but I don't. I don't consider oh yeah, a like big I'd wing. say like a four or five. Sure, maybe they have too many of those. You need like a legit three. Yeah, like what are you gonna like Tari Eason? What are you gonna do with him? Like oh yeah, Tari. They have so many of these guys. You I can just, see why they just had to like give up Ty Ty. They're just like, yeah, we have we can't anymore. We have too many of these guys. So where like where do you go here? Like I was thinking Risa shit, but I could also I mean Buzelis. realistically they they probably trade it is the real answer. Yeah. Or maybe I do don't you just think, go do you do you reach here? Do you do you take a prospect like Topic? But you would trade down to do that. I actually uh, it's hilarious because one pick ago, I was like, I'm not big on this guy. Do you swing for Dillingham here? Here's the logic. Here's the logic. Okay. Like, we take Ron Holland. He's just never going to play. Like, we we have enough developmental wings. We don't need this player. We have enough defense. We have Dylan Brooks. We have Tari Eason. We don't need this guy. Do we have, like, a bench sixth man scorer right now? I mean, no. Ready made? Who was that for them last year? Aaron Holiday? Like, 
Yeah, like can we can we say, listen, Rob Dillingham, we think you might be a star. You're also six foot one. You know, if you project as a sixth man, but you can do it kind of soon, that actually probably helps our team. And if you really pan out, then great. Even better. We're happy about that. You know, are you pretty small between him, Jalen Green, and Fred Van Vliet? Yeah, for sure. But Fred Van Vliet's a good defender. You're not playing all three at once. He's like, you know, come in and get some buckets. Rob. I actually think he kind of makes the most sense. I mean, Reese Suchet is just like people like his defensive upside. He could maybe defend the three for you at 6'9". But again, we just walked through a lot would, of wing I think players. you would have to play him at the three. Yeah. Maybe you size him up, do like a 3-2. I, I don't know if he can really hang at the two, but... I don't either. I don't I, think I he think can this... hang anywhere right now, but... No, I'm not sure if he can. I, I kind of like Dillingham. I, I'm not I'm not mad at it. I mean, maybe I, do you go like else? a... Maybe, maybe you do a Reed Shepard. Yeah, just like more defense. They could use more defense. I, I kind of like Reed Shepard. Because I, I want... They could use more small defense. I think you look at their guards. I mean, he's also not... like he's also like an elite shooter as well. Yeah, I, I think I think one of the Kentucky guys makes sense. Like, I just don't, I, I don't hate a center idea, but I don't love it, and I don't want to just like throw Buzelis in here and be like, here's another one of these guys. Yeah, that's true. I think I, I think I'm leading Shepard here. We can go with Shepard. I think I like him better as a prospect than Dillingham. So even though I liked my Dillingham case. I'll go with Shepard just because I would rather take the better player than the fit. Uh, And uh, they don't have another pick anytime soon. I think in real life, the answer is they're probably trading this and trying to get a star. Um, But we're just doing a draft. So let's take Reed Shepard. San Antonio Spurs are next on the clock here. First of two picks. Yeah, in the top 10. Shout out Jakob Pertl. So let's have this conversation not as drafters, but as the Spurs war room. We think we can get Topic at eight, right? Absolutely. You absolutely So can get we I think eight. we want Topic. I think if Topic falls to us at eight, we take Topic. Like I think even with the injury. Bro, eight might even be a reach. True. Uh we could try at thirty five. <laughs> hey, we're um, not gonna do that this draft, so maybe No, maybe next maybe next time we'll try that. I mean I think the thing they just need more NBA players. I think if Kligan falls to eight, we consider him there. Like, do we swing on Dillingham? Because we just really like we want Vic to not have to do everything on offense. I think I think you need to go guard here. We need a guard. That is what we need. Like, I don't like Risa Shea enough to take him here. No, no. I don't I trust think, him enough to create. I think you I go like, Dillingham. I, I, I think we go Dillingham because of Topic's injury. We and we, do do we just believe? But yeah, I think. <sighs> God. But apparently, like, uh, reportedly, they're they're listening to anyone besides uh, who is it, Wemby and uh, Vassell. Vassell, Vassell, yeah, yeah. So maybe like I don't even know. I would consider trading this pick. I mean, the thing, like, do I feel like I can get Dillingham at eight? Maybe. Yeah. But then, who do you take here? Like, that's the issue. I just want. Do we want Bazalis to defend better, or Holland to just take the swing at it, just like try and develop him? Or do we take Dillingham first because it's our biggest need? We need more shot creation. We need more guard play. Let him pick and roll with Wemby all day. And then we'll come back and take a a fun, intriguing flyer at eight, which almost feels like a free pick. I think so. I think you go, yeah, I think that's a great way to go about it. I don't know if Dillingham is a Spurs player, but I do know they need players who can just create and score. So I, I like it. And good thing about the Spurs is they turn players into Spurs players. That's true. That's a great point. So let's take Rob Dillingham, incredible off the bounce creator and shooter, and just say, Wemby, you got him on defense. It is it is the best place you could put Dillingham, I think, for his defensive issues. <laughs> it's like, all right, you got Wemby behind you. It doesn't even matter. Doesn't no. who cares? Don't even practice it. Just no. be an offensive player. You're good. And <laughs> you guys can be great. Can you be great value, Trey Young? Because if you can, we are going to be awesome, and we have a billion picks to go do stuff. Like we might even get you actual Trey Young. <laughs> we might maybe you can learn from him. Uh, you're probably playing Atlanta if we do that, but that's okay. Um, Easy. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm. I want four and eight. If I, oh no, they would be getting. Never mind. I'm. I'm thinking backwards here. But yeah, I would want four and eight if I'm giving up Trey Young. Would you? Do you? Nor or would you want your own picks back? I'd probably want a mix. Yeah. If maybe. I'm trading a Trey Young, I like the idea of at least two lottery, like two good lotto swings from the jump, just to like. I don't know if the my Spurs odds do of, that. 
I don't think I think the Spurs are getting Trey Young. They probably don't care as much about taking lotto picks That's in this draft. True. That's also true. They got some nice role players. Anyway, we we have enough to get through. Let's we see can't what they can get these... like a haul for Keldon or something. I don't know. Let, we have to do the trades later. We have to focus on. We, we're doing this halfway through the pod. We're on pick five. Okay. Uh, the the Detroit Pistons. I've heard a lot of Buzelis here. I like that a fair bit. I do think they just need like more competent wing play. I think that's their number one need. Yeah. I think yeah, anytime you can get a big big wing, you have to do it. I could see Buzelis. I could see Risa Shea here. I know. As a Risa Shea hater, it does make a lot of sense to me. Just like a low floor, high ceiling type of guy. The Pistons would just like take a shot. We don't know what Langdon's gonna do in. Are they gonna now. be? Are they gonna be either. scarred? Are they gonna be scarred by um, Hayes? I don't know. Maybe I thought you were gonna say Darko. Then I forgot about Killian Hayes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I like Reese Shea. Also, I, think, I don't want him to fall really far on our on our board, and I still look silly. Although yeah. maybe in real life, like we were just talking before that, like mock drafts are all over the place, so everyone's probably gonna look a little silly. Mm. So and we don't. I, claim to be I'm draft worried. Experts. I'm worried he's not athletic enough. He profiles as a good rangy defender. Like I just don't know if I buy his driving, but his shot looks good. But I guess they could just use like kind of a utility player who fits in around Cade and Ivy. So I think it makes sense. Yeah, I definitely see it. I mean, he has the best upside at this pick. Yeah, for so sure. So if, if you're the Pistons and you you just have the worst season in your franchise history, only to pick fifth, if you can get one of the guys with the biggest upside, you, I think you take it. Also, like I've made a big joke out of how Simone Fontecchio changed their lives. So maybe Risa Shea will look awesome in Detroit. Yeah. Zachary Risa Shea, tagline, better than Isaiah Livers. Let's call it in. Done. We, we, up, <laughs> we upgraded Isaiah Livers big time. Let's go. The Charlotte Hornets, a team near and dear to Andrew Snyder's heart. No, unfortunately. Do we just run in and take Buzelis here? I think you do. I think this is a steal for the Hornets. Yeah, I mean... I really like the core of LaMelo Ball, if he can stay healthy, and then Brandon Buzelis and Brandon Miller Like That's, on a, that's the a killer wings. combo. Like you're very – you're huge, but not in a slow way. Like I think yeah. this is like where what we're seeing the NBA is going. Like let's just – let's have our guys at the three and four both be like 6'9", 6'10", and very mobile. Like that's just going to make you so much better on both ends almost by default. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think Buzelis is the big here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like Mark Williams enough that I'm not looking at center. Uh, I, I think you need to figure out your two guard, but hey, do you have, do you have we have some cap space this year. That's Clay Thompson money. That's Clay Thompson money. That would be, I think they'd be way better. He, uh, like Clay's not even that good anymore. We'd like a functional two guard of next to LaMelo, Buzelis, uh, Brandon Miller, and Mark Williams. That's a good team. Yeah, we're taking Buzelis here. Okay, I like I like the way this draft's going so far. It's good, about to get weird. The Portland Trailblazers oh, yeah. at seven. Oh my god! I like the thing about Portland is they were really bad. They have a lot of players on the roster. It's crazy, there's not a lot of huge right? holes. I know, but the thing is, like, my immediately my immediate thought with the Blazers was Klingon. But then I was like, then what's the point of Aiton? Yeah, he's there for a long time and a lot. Of, well, actually, only two, two more years. More years. He says, but thirty-four million a year. I, that I saw it. See, I, I'm like, yeah, there's no way Klingon falls. I think it's very possible Klingon falls. Absolutely, like it is. Not a lot of teams are dying for a center. I can see him I go like, two. I can see him go ten. I like Ron Holland here. I'm not mad at Ron Holland here. I think because you got Simons and you got Scoot, and neither one of those guys is a great defender. I like the idea of dropping Holland in with Sharp and being like, these are our just like athletic wings that are physical. And they can help us cover for the rest of these guys. And like we know we're not going to be good next year. This is a team realistically. They would love to be trying to get Cooper Flag, right? Like yeah. this was their first true tank year was last year. We know this draft sucks. We know the West is not getting worse fast. Like they're not in a big hurry. I think they've only been bad one year. Ron Holland makes a lot of sense here. Basically yeah. that, you know, raw, really raw offensively. But like super physical for I think a nineteen year old, good defender already. Like just see what he develops into. I think at eight, what is it? Or are we seven? Eight? No, seven. Seven. I think this is a good time to take that swing. Or, or ah, uh, see, yeah. I'm not doing Cody Williams. I'm not doing Cody Williams either. Okay. I was thinking, I thought, I was thinking Dalton Connect. Oh, I, I, 
I think he's more of like a win now type player. He is. He's like but he's 23 also like years not. old. <laughs> he's like 23 years old, but I mean, you get him for a rookie contract and then his restricted rights. So it's not like, you know, you don't need, it's not you like the age is that big of a deal. Yeah, literally. If you want him. I would. I think I prefer the Holland swing. I think right? Holland is better, especially considering they're probably going to try to get Cooper Flag. Yeah, that's a good call. I think if they, I think if they weren't, I think you would go connect to. And like, are they? Are they? I guess they. They're kind of dying for spacing. They probably are. They could use a vet, but like Grant Simons are good shooters. If Brogdon's still there, he's obviously a good shooter. The table sometimes turns into you too. Yeah, I like Holland here. I think. I think you have to look at it almost maybe as they, like maybe they trade Jeremy Grant. You have some wing minutes opening up. Yeah, I, I just think you know ignore the old guys. Our young core is now Scoot Simons ish. He's getting a little older, but still pretty young. Holland Sharp. It's like are they all great fits together? No, but it, I think you almost have to be like, all right, we have four guys. Like if two of them end up being stars, then oh we're God, in a pretty good Reith. spot. And to Upreath, who is I think older than you. He definitely is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Ron Holland. Do up Ruth is Ruth is twenty seven. Oh, so yes, yes. <laughs> Damn, I'm drafting Ron Holland. Okay, I'm fine with Ron Holland. We are back to the Spurs. the Spurs. So we 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 nailed Dillingham at four. We got our guard. Do we double dip on guard or and take do- Nikola Topic, the number one pick on the consent, no, the top remaining consensus board player at number three. Yeah, I think I think Or do we take Connect, who makes I think the most immediate sense, or Or do you go well, or do you go like Klingon? Do you I just, was just gonna pitch Klingon. Do I we was, just say I think Klingon? Let's make our defensive front court an absolute monster, dude. I think I think you could ooh, I'm thinking Topic, Connect, or Klingon here. That's where I'm at too. I'm not a big Cody Williams guy. I, I just if you want an intriguing wing, like I think the Spurs are fine there. I think they have a lot of these guys already. I don't think you need to add another one. I like Connect just because I think he makes so much sense immediately on yeah, their Especially team. if you trade like Kelvin. Yeah. But even if you don't, just another guy who comes in off the bench and shoots. Like every team could use that. I mean, you're you know, you're talking you don't about have, their, their, you don't have to have Chetty Osman do it. Exactly. You're you're talking about moving on from a guy like Chetty Osman. Topic is like the home run swing for the fences, like one of these point guards is going to work out and they're going to be great with Wemby. Klingon is like the, you know what, we're, n- we're not going to be a bad defense again this year. But here's the thing with Klingon, though, is you have to play him at center. 100%. So does that does that limit your versatility with Wembenyama? No, I just I think it limits his minutes, but that's not a bad thing. Look what the Jazz have done with uh, my guy. Kessler? Yes, Walker Kessler. What he immediately started once Gobert was traded? He doesn't play very much. That's just what I mean. Oh, okay. His minutes per game are relatively yes. low for most starting players. Like you can still have your you can still play Kelly Olynyk a bunch. In this case, it's Wembenyama, which is maybe the funniest combo <laughs> ever made. But you can still play Wemby a bunch at the five. You just don't play Klingon as much. You're taking him eight. You're taking him eight, but you have your franchise. You just picked another guy higher than him, and it's really a it's a luxury pick. I do think. I, I see the vision and I want them like they, that that would be like a twin towers for like a, a decade. I, I think it could really work. I think it could work too. But I could also see them getting connect. <laughs> like so maybe let, let, maybe the Spurs let's, want to transition into a more like winning team. Like they have I think either way this either one of those picks helps them with that. It's just different sides of the ball. I know, but I think I think connects fits better with the the picks you would make already. I don't know. I mean, I think if you feel even much better about the center, I think you feel better about Dillingham out in front of you. If you have not one, but two great defensive. I mean, we'll see if Klingon's great year one, but you know what I mean? Like two better defensive players. He's a seven plus four. Yeah. And just like the paint is just going to be difficult. I, I think, you know, Wemby's great offensively. I think he's even better defensively. My pitch here is like, Let's just lean into that and let's try and become one of these defensive teams where like the Bucks, like the Grizzlies, when they have a true center next to Jaron, like we have two guys. It's going to be very hard to score against us. Yeah, I see it. Who do you think is better, a better prospect? Better let's prospect have that be the coin Klingon. flip. Then I, and then I say we take Klingon. You know what? I, you know what? You got me. Let's do it. 
I like it. I, I, I think Connect is very good too. I just I feel strongly about this idea for them. No, but I love I think, it. I, I, I think I Connect totally would be a good it. pick too. No, I love but it. But I think like you got Vassell who's he has space in the floor. They could use more spacing, but we're gonna call in Clay. Hey, that could be that could be Dylan. Then and yeah, Dillingham's a good shooter too. It's a great call. And then when they get uh, Trey Young, like Yeah. That's a no I mean, again, and they they also I believe Maybe have a bunch of cap the Clay space. Thompson team. I mean, or like a, a better player too. I mean, they could go get anyone. They they have a they have a ton of picks as well. They have a ton of resources. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, thank you. The Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, do we just put connect there now, or do they? Oh, they need a big though. They, that's what I'm gonna say. So they like, just got sniped. They did just get sniped, which is why I think they would probably trade up in this situation. But we're not. Oh yeah. Trade. Do you like? Would you give 39 to go up one pick and guarantee Klingon? I would think about it. I would, yeah. And then you're the Spurs. You're like, great, we have another pick, and we can take Connect, who we also felt good about. Yeah. Um, for the Grizzlies of it all, what if they just like go up and take? They're like, I was going to say, do we, where. do we reach for the center here? I kind of think we do, to be honest with I you. I don't because this is too high of a pick. I don't, but but this draft. I know this draft. I know this draft. And we're not doing trades, so like, I don't see a world where they take Topic. What if they take Edie? Wow. I mean, see, you can't, you cannot just get where to the Bucks. I think I. <laughs> I'm not saying that that you, has to be the pick, but you, you got, can't you, you, just be like, let's give all the other centers to away. My here. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't hate E for them, but I wouldn't obviously. I wouldn't take him ten. I think. I think if you don't go guard, if you don't go center here, let's say, let's say, let's say let's you want to keep. We're not going to reach. We're not going to reach. Yeah. We're not going to trade down. We we'll, we will sign a. We will trade for Nick Richards. Every team will trade for Nick Richards. Yes. They, we will clone 30 Nick Rich, 29 Nick Richards, and then every yeah. team gets one. Can you imagine? That'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> maybe not for Nick Richards, but... <laughs> yeah. Be very I don't know. How do you think him. Nick Richards would feel? Like? Nick Richards, come on the pod. Tell us about that. But if you don't go big here, do you go like... Like, what? This, this is a... It's a weird team. Obviously, I think Connect kind of makes sense. I see Connect here. I mean, like, who knows what they do with Marcus Smart, whether they trade him or not. Yeah. Uh, Jaren's not going anywhere. Bain's not going anywhere. The John. Yeah, I, th- I see. I see the two, three as their biggest hole, and then they obviously need a five. But we're we're ruling that out for now. Yes. Or maybe they just keep Jaren at the five. It didn't work last year, but maybe it'll work this. Yeah. year. Yeah. But if we're not looking at fives, like a three-ish player is really what they would need then here. So I think I think you go connect here. Yeah. We we just agreed he's just better than Cody Williams, so that's why we're taking him over him. Connect but also, over Williams. But also, I can see a team like the Grizzlies. Who may not have a top ten pick like this for a while? Swing for the fences. Yeah, maybe it worked so well for the Bucks in 2016 that more teams should try it. That's the comp I was thinking of. Like that's the last <laughs> team where it's like, oh, we don't know when we're going to have this type of high pick again. Let's just let's just swing for the fences. So what? Uh, we take like Salone. I mean, maybe. I don't see. I don't see why not. I, but also, well, I, I can see this team wanting to win, and when I, I think they I want talked to win about, now. they want to win now, and a, a team, a guy like Connect, who's a bit older and can translate right away. I think you go Connect here. You always need more shooters. Let's just let's not overthink this one. Yeah, we got a lot of picks to get through. <laughs> we do. Um, so now we have ten, the Utah Jazz, and they can really go anywhere. I mean, they they could do toe pitch here. Oh, I think that makes so much sense. Actually, I think we should just do that. I mean, they. The, they just drafted Keontae George, who they like. That's fine. They have Walker Kessler, so we're probably not taking a center. But there's none on the board. They might I, trade. I, they might trade Lowry. Yeah, they might trade Markkinen. They might trade John Collins. Like they have Sexton. Who knows about that? Like even if he doesn't play right away, the Jazz also are a team who probably would love to take Cooper Flag. They were kind of good this last year, then kind of not. Like they're not going to go chips on the table. We know Danny Ainge. I think if you're Utah. You go, this is a guy who was talked about at number one, at least as a top three pick. Let's great, just grab great him and Utah go. Utah pick, too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take Topic. I think this is where the slide ends. I think they just go, yeah, we'll do that. We'll just take it. Hey, maybe that ACL is not fully torn, you know? <laughs> hey, even if it is, we can get Colin Sexton can raise the trade value a little more. Yeah. Uh, 11, the Bulls. A, we can, speaking of the Bulls, we could do a, like Lonzo Ball then. Maybe we'll get an ACL donor. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, what Lonzo had a meniscus donor. That's crazy. Yeah. To the Bulls. Uh, yeah, the Bulls are on the clock. 
It's so um, funny. I'm looking. I, I I pulled up the fan spell draft that we're working with, and team yeah. needs everything is severe except for shooting guard. <laughs> Slavine and DeRozan, at least for now. Um, I mean, DeRozan's Levine, a free agent, so who knows? DeRozan's a free agent. Levine could get traded. Um, just severe. It's so severe, funny. severe, severe. That is very funny. I love – that's pretty disrespectful. I love it when, much, they, when they do draft like everything. Do you remember a few years ago? Oh, who was it? It was it was when the Heat were in the finals or, or – it's something like that. It was like, what are your biggest biggest needs for oh, the game? Yeah. And it's like, LeBron, wake up. LeBron, get on bus. LeBron, go to game. LeBron, play a game. It's, <laughs> yeah. That was great. Uh, what do we want to do for the Bulls here? Bro, I have is this no the clue. So, I like Isaiah Collier's upside, but they have so many young point guards that I don't want to take another young point guard. They have Io. They have Kobe White, who I actually disagree. I don't think point guard need is severe. I think after that last season, you feel real good about Cody. Williams. Absolutely, you do. Pat Williams is a restricted free agent. You were and already not playing as good Demar. As you he was going to be correct. You were already playing Demar Derozan like at the four at times. I do think you need size. I think either Cody Williams or Tijan Tijan Saloon, or something like that. I think yeah. I think you have to go like at least a wing or higher here with your position. I could see a Cody Williams. I could see a Saloon. I mean, I just, I genuinely don't know. I mean, what, what is this front off front office going to do? Well, we're, we're, we're not going to, if we were being the bulls, I don't know. We wouldn't take Saloon. I feel like we would probably take, take we would Devin take, Carter. I'd say Colic. or Collier or Collier <laughs> or Colic. Um, we, hey, we just take another, apparently who's, Chicago who's the most guys ready? just love, love, Guys coming down from Milwaukee, so that's true. How that works yeah. for you, Craig? Yeah, uh, Greg, Craig, Greg, Craig, Greg. I, I don't hate Cody Williams here. Snipe the uh, his brother's team, who maybe the Thunder are like. Thank God, thank God, we don't have to pass on on your bro. <laughs> I could see that honestly. Um, but maybe they like him. Who knows? If they really wanted to, they could trade up with their billion picks, though. Yeah. Not in this mock, though. Uh, I don't. I, I think Cody Williams or Saloon. Which one do you prefer? I think you just they need a they need a wing with size. Either I one think I think you fits. go Saloon. I, I like that. Even bigger, even more upside. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Bulls and you want to keep it like you're, you're always want to be competitive. Like it's not like this guy's going to play too much anyway. Yeah, so might as well swing for like get a high up. They just they need size badly, bro. They need everything. I mean, my guy. Um, Javante Green, yeah, is playing the four. He's also like six five. Like they just have no size. Uh, okay, the Thunder. They C. have a lot of things set. You said Do we okay, just so go I with the C. Nepo pick? Oh, nice. Yeah. I did, I thought you were gonna say okay. I got you. Yeah. I mean, why not do the Nepo pick, right? <laughs> I mean, I think Cody Williams. I don't even think. I don't think it's an. I don't think it's a nepo pick. To be, I I don't love Cody Williams, but this is the part of the draft and last pick too, where I'm like, yeah, you could take the swing on the intriguing young wing at this point in the draft. Yeah, why not? Like, I don't think you take a point guard, so that kind of rules out. So here, let's let's refresh the board. Cody Williams at ten. This is the fan spoke consensus board. I have have ESPN's draft board. Is Cody Williams top there too? Yeah, he's twelve. On this one, it's Collier at twelve. Jacoby Walter at 13, Jared McCain at 15, Devin Carter at 16. So it's literally four guards who are 6'3 to 6'5, which is not really what you need if you're OKC. I think this playoffs, like we need more size, right? We kind of got bullied. We weren't physical enough. We weren't big enough. We should take the swing on the wing player. And then Filipowski would be next under those guys, but I would not feel comfortable taking him right here. Filipowski at, what is this, pick 12, 12 is crazy. Uh, I won't say full crazy. He is the funny thing is I wouldn't be shocked. He is one of their kind of players. Dribble, yeah. pass, shoot, like they love that. They love that stuff. Yeah, but they, they also love they also love Jalen Williams. So they do, and all their Jalen Williams. Yeah, but more more of this guy Cody's brother. So yeah. I I think it makes sense for Bro, them. Jay, I think I think speaking of your size thing, I think Jay will playing a lot in the playoffs was like, oh god, we need something. Is Cody bigger than Jay Will? No, J- or like, J Dub? I no, he, J- I think he is bigger than. I think he's like the same. His brother. As he's bigger than yeah. his brother, right? Oh. Uh, J Dub is, I think, six eight or six nine himself. The bigger one. Uh, I thought Jalen Williams was six six. He's, he's but, six five. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it would give you more size, ironically. The little bro is bigger. Okay. Cody I, I, I like Cody. Yeah. Brings us to the Kangs, the Sacramento Kings oh, of it all. This is tough. With the 13th pick. This is a weird team. They were a team who two years ago, two seasons ago, were just the they the bell of the ball. Yeah, the bell of the ball. They outperformed expectations. They came in, they started winning. Lost uh, a playoff series in the first round to the Warriors, but, uh, you know, they were like, okay, we've arrived. And then they were the same team, but the West improved. And then yeah. it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Did they not even make the playoffs? No. They're losing the play-in? Are they not yes. even? Okay, that, 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 they had to be top 10. Yeah. A disappointing year. They could trade this. I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest with you. I don't know either. Um, I could see them like maybe maybe Harrison Barnes is the guy who gets traded later. Yeah. He's been a guy one of the Bucks for a while. Maybe they uh, trade Kevin Herter. Who knows? I, I like just – I think we don't overthink too much. Like I don't want to – I don't want a point guard because the one thing you for sure know is Fox and Sabonis. Mm-hmm. Jacoby Walter just to be like a future potential two that's, next That's time. who I'm thinking. I'm thinking – or, or hear, hear me out. Hear me okay. out. Zach Eady. You keep trying to no, because not him and Sabonis. Why Sabonis is not a center. No, but it's I. I just I worry about your your foot speed. Oh, it'd be it'd be horrendous. But like, yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Or maybe I, I, I'm not going like to Ed for too long. But you do a here. Tristan De Silva here. Maybe it's it's a reach, and I want to save him for the Bucks. <laughs> so yeah, so so only I can't do. Um, maybe. I don't. I don't hate it. I mean, they could no, use. No, I like, think I think Jacoby Walton. I, I guess I, I. The other the other guy is Keegan Murray, probably at the four. Yeah. So you, or three, if you count Sabonis as a four. So I think if if they moved Herder, that that could be. Also, I saw Sasha Vesnikov could be traded, and it's like okay. Sure. <laughs> it's not moving anyone's needle. Malik Monk is a big question mark. They probably can't keep him. They can only pay him so much because of the early bird rules. So if and actually that could be who are we talking about? The teams that needed shooting. There's your real guy. Oh yeah, Spurs. Spurs or Hornets Magic. or Pistons if they have cap space. Magic would be really fun. Um so you might lose your he was their sixth man, but you might need someone to come in and play that two guard role. I like uh Jacoby Walter quite a bit. Yep, let's do that. And listen, you're you're good. Like you didn't contend last year. I, I don't think you want to just do a plug and play old rookie and be like, yeah, it's all we need is a little bit more reinforcements. You need some things to pan out here. Yeah. No, I agree. All right, we'll take Jacob. Young Chris Middleton, they're calling him, right? <laughs> That's what that's Is that correct? Saying. Is that is that the ringer? He wasn't he comped as oh, Middleton? Was he? Let me see. That. I thought I thought one guy was. I thought it was him. Um Jacoby Walter. Yep, Chris Middleton. There we go. Nice. Nice. Big draft guy tie. The Portland Trailblazers are back on the clock. We gave them Ron Holland. So Isaiah Collier is so going to keep sliding. I'm on, I'm on KOCs right now just to pull that up. And he yeah. had Ron Holland at this pick. To 14? Yeah. Damn. So we, we reached according to KOC. And he had Dillingham 15. Wow. Hates I Americans. Don't say – I don't see this at all. He hates Americans. Yeah. Confirmed. So – I have no idea what the Blazers do here. No, I mean, who did we have them taking earlier? We we, had, they took Holland. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah, seven. No. Uh, yeah, they so, took Ron Holland here. I mean, I could see them taking like a, 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 a De Silva here. Yeah. I mean, just like another they, wing. Do they go Devin Carter? I, probably not. It's too much. No, there's too many guards. Oh, ooh, I got a good one. I'd like to pitch you. Okay. Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith. The okay. big, big stretch four project who really needs to work defensively, but his I shot looks good. A reach. He moves super well. He's one above to Silva on the fan spell board. Oh, and here he's 27. Oh, wow. Fan spell board is crazy. I think he's been, guys have been, or people have been split on him. Your guy, Edie? Yeah, I could see Edie here. Let's not say he's my guy, by the way. You're the one who keeps saying, hey, what about you? That is true. I do keep saying Would that. Filipowski be fun here with all their offensive players, or do we just not like him enough? I don't personally like him enough. Like, again, this is the 14th pick. Yeah. But also, like, you shouldn't... 
I think I'm thinking about this too much in terms of like trying to fill out a roster, which is not what Portland needs to do here. Right. Yeah, that's. A, I, I think that's a great Maybe you call. take like a, a project. Maybe maybe you take Devin Carter. Do you, What about Eves Missy? No, I don't see that. No, he's 18 here, so he might be higher on this board than the one you have. No, I... I, I he's oh, you just don't see it? I just don't see it for the Blazers. Like, you, you have so much big depth. Like, you have Aiton, you still have Robert Williams. You still have Robert Williams. You still have, have my guy, guy your guy Duopery. And yeah, you have you're right. our guy, Ibubaji. That's true. If I, if he resigns. Yeah, I, this is a really tough one. Like, I don't like Jared McCain here. Like, maybe, you have, maybe you go guard. Maybe you take Devin Carter. Just like, let's have another two-way guard here. Yeah, why not? We see Dillingham as a forward, so we can take Devin Carter here. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, let's go Devin Carter then. Let's do it. I, I don't like any of these. This is a hard pick. They, I don't know what they They should condense these picks. They do not need two first. Uh, heat culture. Whew. Loaded, loaded pick here. No idea what they're going to do or what they need. Uh, what do the Heat need? I'll ask you that question. What do the Heat need? They need everyone outside of... Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? They need everyone outside of Jimmy and Bam to get better. Yeah, I don't think they need more small guard play with Hero, Rozier. So, like, I don't really like a McCain or a Collier. Maybe go to Silva here. You know, I don't hate Filipowski here. I don't hate Filipowski there either. Your long-term Kevin Love replacement? So Your rangy year? big? Yeah. Long-term or where, Kevin Re- Love where. replacement in 2024 is crazy. Well, he was pretty important to their team last year. I, yeah, that is true. That is true. It could be a fun mix with Bam. Like if I don't know what you want to call each of them defensively, but like you know what I mean. Like it, it kind of makes sense to me that think they do different things, but maybe they could complement each other. I think I I don't know. It still feels like a little bit of a reach. He's the third highest player on the consensus board. It's Collier, McCain, and him. Uh, there's, I mean, De Silva makes sense here too, as sad as it would make me. Like, I, they could just use more. Caleb Martin's on a player option. Caleb Martin could leave this year. I don't know. They have Jaime Jaquez, so they, you know, they have some forwards. But you could always use more wings. Yeah, maybe you do go Filipowski here. I kind of like it. To be I honest. think it makes sense. Skilled big, get bigger. You know, not rely on Kevin Love as much. Ideally, um, yeah, let's do it. I, I like. I, I think people are a little too low on Filipowski. I think he doesn't – because he doesn't make sense as like a lot of traditional bigs, but the things he does are pretty interesting. No, and also, I, they took Nikola Jovic. They're not afraid to take the awkward-looking white guy. That is true. No offense, Kyle Filipowski. I'm awkward-looking too. <laughs> take that, Jovic. We don't feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. No offense to Jovic either. <laughs> he's, he's like, I can call Philip. I can call you a funny-looking white guy, but sorry. <laughs> my guy, Kyle Filipowski, I cannot <laughs> I don't know why I felt worse for Filipowski than Jovic. <laughs> Sorry, Nikola Jovic. Um, uh, Philadelphia 76ers at 16. I kind of like Jared McCain here. Yeah. He's supposed to, so the comp is Seth Curry. This might be a little rich because I just I don't find that to be that interesting of a player. But I mean, the roster is literally like what Maxi and Embiid is the only things that are in stone right Basically. now. Basically, um, and I think there's like a small hold on B-ball Paul, but they could waive him too. It's not a full guarantee. So really, any oh, any position except center and starting point guard. I don't hate McCain here, actually. McCain De Silva. Tyler Smith, but again, probably too much of a project for them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not upset at McCain here. Just like another shooter, I think always good fits. to have those. Yeah, you know, you could, you know, he was on ball a lot in college, but I think in the NBA, you know, run him off screens. You know, he can be your Isaiah Joe. Yeah, who you gave up and then just became Isaiah Joe and again and okay, get, get another one and give him away. Yeah, okay, he's like, please do it again. We'd love to have Jared McCain here in like four or three years. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe they bring back, I mean, we talked about their rosters empty, but like 
Batum is likely back, I feel. Like, you know, they're probably going to acquire a wing player. They're going to use their cap space and picks. So I like the idea of just like, let's supplement the guard part of the rotation with McCain. I agree. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Um, okay. The Los Angeles Lakers. Ooh. Isaiah Collier might just keep sliding. I, I don't. I mean, he went to USC, but I don't really. Uh, hey, if you're the if Lakers, you're, you're, you're going to take Bronny later. Might as well take a teammate. That's interesting. Um, I mean, I, I I say that as a joke, but I honestly see the vision a little bit. I do too. Like, are you losing D'Angelo Russell? Do we think a player option? They could probably no, retain him I if think, they I wanted think he, to. I think he stays. I, they figure out a way to keep him. Like you have, do you take a center here? Do you do, take Edie? Do you take Edie? Or do you want Kelly Ware? Do you, you, want you, a might ta- you might take Edie here. Like this is they the thing like, we were talking about earlier like with the Lakers. college players. Like is that Kuzma? This we were talking about Lakers earlier. It's been a long I don't time. remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Darvin. Yeah. Yeah. Was this pod? Was this pod? Uh, so like, I mean, if you if you want to talk about like how they they love chasing big names, why not take a literal big name? They also have not shied away from old college players. Big hit in Kuzma. Um, man, is this such a reach though? With Missy and Ware on the board. Hey, it's, if they want to keep Ware on the board, that's fine with me. I'm trying to think of like what's the case for Edie over those two guys. Over which bigger? Team? Oh, over uh, Ware, Ware and, and, and Missy. Missy, and I guess Holmes too. I think bigger, uh, more uh, obviously talented prospect. Yeah, like just a math like the. The Lakers have seen in the past how you had just pairing like a big. <sighs> I don't know if center. I can do, but the the spacing we know AD doesn't isn't actually a shooter. But we also know that they like putting a non shooting center with AD. That's that has worked for them in the past. Yeah, like that's the formula that we talked about earlier that they just went away from. If only we knew who their coach was, so we could yeah. imagine what he wants to oh, do. Oh, Dan Hurley would have taken Zach AD in a heartbeat. Yeah, I think he might have. He's like, I know we beat this guy. Did they beat him? Yep. Yeah. I know the championship, we, but he was a damn good game. I know, I know, we beat this guy, but you know what? I, I need him. But it's I'll not do it. You know what? Let, let's have fun. Let's Zach do it. Eady. Zach Eady at seventeen to the Lakers. Orlando's on the clock. Oh, do we just take Collier here? Fultz is a free agent, but you still have like, I mean, you still I, have I, Cole Anthony. I was going to say Anthony Jaylen Black Suggs and Anthony Black. Oh, I forgot about him. Like I don't know. I don't know. So have Sundarius Thornwell. No, they don't. No, they <laughs> don't. Is, there's no shot. He's they on here. Sundar- he was a no, two way. He was a two way. He's I, listed on here. I refuse to believe. Look up the stats. <laughs> I, I just had to do that. No way. You Sundarius. still have Sundarius Thornwell. <laughs> oh my! No, they don't. He hasn't played since 2021. Okay, full fans, but they still have his rights. Apparently, they still have the rights to Sundarius Thornwell. Serious Thor- Thornwell, Sterling <laughs> Brown trade. Yep, I wanted Thornwell bad in that class too. Anyway, no, we can't. We can't do this. The Magic, they need shooting. Realistically, they got Ingles. We know it's probably not a long shelf life on how much you want him to play. Nope. They just don't have a lot of shooting. Is um, is Joe Ingles even going to be on the team? It's a team option. <laughs> yeah, it's a great. It's a great question. But the you best, also might be getting Clay Thompson. You might be. Is this the Tyler Smith destination? Is it? I don't think they feel pressure to be like really good this year. I think they want to be better than they were last year. I think they want to be better, but I think, you know, do you rely on like adding a free agent? You have 36 million in cap space. Like I don't think they need this pick to be a big helper next. Do you take year. to Silva? You think about taking to Silva here. He was a good shooter. He would be a good connective tissue for But them. you also need some playmaking. Like what did we see during that Magic Cavs series that really did them in? Like a lot of it was playmaking. Collier, but then you no shooting. But he's the best playmaker available for sure. Oh, this is tough for Orlando. What about Bub Carrington? Carlton Carrington. Ah, oh. there's a community scouting report by JBB. JB Bean, a user on JBB. Oh, okay. They put stats. You're on loving here. this fan spell. Oh, oh there's a Leaky Black has a review. I don't think it's the player. This is the uh, this is the leaky black analysis. Everything except his shooting percentages look good. 
He isn't an elite athlete. I don't see a skill that makes him elite. He's a solid scorer, passer, and pretty good defender. That's honest analysis from active NBA player Leaky Black, maybe. Oh, man. I think... I have no idea what they do. I, do, I don't know. The draft has fallen really weird for them. Bobby, Bobby Clintman, little big who can maybe shoot. That's a project, too, though. I feel like I'd just take Tyler Smith at that point. I think you... This is weird. I could see Collier. I could see De Silva. I think it might be De Silva. Is it the, the I just I don't know if they take an old player. Kansas. What's his name? Johnny, Johnny Furphy. Yeah. How did he shoot last year? I wish this profile gave me the shooting and not just maybe rely on your uh, armchair scout. Yeah, literally armchair scout is the username here. Oh, <laughs> of the top guy. That's insane that you said that at the same time. Uh, what is what? What did Johnny Furphy? Show? I know people like Johnny Furphy. Let's I don't know what to do with Orlando here. I think this is the hardest pick in the draft. It really is. Because they have very specific needs, but it's like high value things. Johnny Furphy. Let's see. What did he shoot? Uh, He's 6'9. So if it's like a good percentage, I wonder if we just go like, here you go. Shot You're 35% last year from deep. Wow, 64% from two. More threes than two. So he 70, probably projects as a shooter. 76% from three throw. It's decent. Um, should we just break my heart and go to Silva? I think it makes sense. I think it does make sense, unfortunately. Fine. Fine. Tristan De Silva, 18, Orlando. 19, Toronto Raptors. Okay, uh, who's the weirdest? Talk about a team that Bro, could they, use they'd be a Misi team for sure. But they have Pirtle and yeah. Olenek now. They just traded for Olenek too. There's no minutes for a center. I still like Tyler Smith. The big shooter. I mean, I could see it. That's what they want their team to be huge, right? So why not get a guy who can space and be big, unlike most of their existing big guys who just cannot shoot at all, and then trade Jalen McDaniels to the Bucks. Yes. I mean, I could see Ty- Tyler Smith is that weird guy who's just going to be there. He's also, I feel like they've they've really swung at projects, except yeah. Grady Dick. That was kind of out of left field. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, fans one needs to update their depth chart. They have Jonte Porter. Let's start it. It's a, not a good bet. Hey, nice. Hey. Uh, uh, do we go with Smith here? I, I don't like the centers just because they have two centers. And then Kali is the big faller. I was going to say, maybe, I, maybe they sense. just take Kali. Yeah, I mean, they, I think they like Scotty having the ball, but you can have Scotty and your rookie point guard have I think, the ball. I don't think you should put Scotty in, in the ball full time. What about quickly? Mm, yeah, I'd, I do like IQ. Restricted, I assume they pay him. I but you can they... have a second point guard. Like, uh, this, it like makes a, a lot of sense. Guard. Like, he's not going yeah. to be a starter. I think we, I I actually, think we just take him. Yeah, I, I, he, his fall ends here. Isaiah Collier. 20th pick, Cleveland Cavaliers. Ooh, could be a big summer for them. Very big summer. I don't know don't what know, they're finding here. Don't know what they're, who their coach is either. I don't know. Oh, this actually would have been a really good Collier team if he fell one more spot. If you're worried about Garland asking for a trade, yeah, then I think he would be a nice fit with Mitchell too, and with Garland, just like a defensive guard, mm. physical guard. Um, a lot of their rotation is staying. Okoro is a restricted free agent. We'll see what happens. Likely there. Likely staying. I think so. Like what? What did them in? I mean, it was injuries. That's what did them in. Yeah, and just. They probably could use more wings, I would say. Yeah, like Max Strews changed their lives. Uh, yeah, just like another capable wing off the bench. Like someone you can trust in the playoffs to shoot. I mean, Tyler Smith, maybe Furphy here. Yeah, maybe. I could see Furphy. Or Kevin McCullough Jr. Uh, I don't know. He's like, he's older. I think he shot a little better than Furphy. Let me pull this up quick. I know I saw somebody mock him to the box. It was like a – I was like just looking at all sorts of not just like the major mock drafts and I looked him up a little bit. He was a five-year pro. Oh, no. He's actually not a great shooter. Yeah, I think I think I like Smith here. Just like another shooter you can bring off the bench. Try and – I guess you're hoping to upgrade on George Niang. I guess, yeah. I don't know. I, I think a three would be ideal. Bob Carrington, I guess. six, But he's only 6'5". Or do you I take think, Furphy? 
I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I think I think you might go Tyler Smith here. I think Smith or Furphy. You just like stick him next to Max Drews and just say do everything he does. Yeah, and I think I think you go Furphy here. Or not Furphy, uh, Tyler Smith here. Smith? Too. Okay. I, I like Smith's upside. His shot looks really good for that size. So I know. That's like that's a big upside thing. Let's do it. Let's take Tyler Smith. Uh the New Orleans Pelicans. Valanciunas is a free agent. I think center makes a lot of sense, and the board fell really well for them. Which is why they're going to take Misi. <laughs> it just so happens to be Misi. It's just, huh? it just so happens. I you know? actually think this would have been a really good... Um, ED team. Yeah, this would have been a good ED team. I don't hate Holmes, and I wouldn't have hated... I don't hate Ware either, because I do think... With Zion, you wouldn't mind having a stretch five. But Which is, I, I'm I don't so think it's essential. About them taking where I know I've seen it in some mocks where he goes one pick ahead. I I just or two picks ahead. This is a twenty one. No. Oh, I forgot the Suns have a pick. Oh yeah, we'll put Bronny there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I could see them taking a big year, especially or maybe Valanciunas comes back on a team friendly deal. I don't know what his suitors are going to be like in free agency. Also, some I don't news know. I don't know what else of, they would take. Out of Golden though. State, there are reports that Kavon Looney might be a free agent. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, he's just pretty bad. He's bad. He was bad last year. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't great. I think the athleticism is gone. Yeah. To be fair, he didn't have a lot to begin with. Yeah, I mean, but but sometimes those guys, the half step can be real costly. But he was so good for them. Yeah. I so was be PJ mad. Tucker for the Bucks. Don't say that. I'm just, I still think Loon got how something. life goes. Bro, he's like he's like not even thirty yet. He's got some long years on those big big legs. He is twenty eight. Almost Maybe like he it. does. Maybe he, does. he could be a flyer. And let's not talk about Loon right now. What should the Pelicans do at twenty one? Well, it's relevant because they might have some free agent centers available to them. Yeah, potentially. I mean, they still they they would have none if if Valanciunas walks. They could Do use you, a second one. I think you might need more playmaking on this team. I mean, CJ just doesn't have it. Do we go Bub Carrington, little play at six five playmaker? I could see that honestly. Big Bub fan. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like just calling the guy Bub. Bub. <laughs> Bub. I mean. Like this is a team that desperately needs something, you know, like in in terms of yeah. playmaking cards because they rely too much on CJ, right? Yeah. So I yeah, someone s- to get the ball to, to get the Zion. ball to Bi to but more importantly uh, to Zion. It might not even be a, Bi, man. Yeah, it might not be Bi. Trey Murphy a little bit too. Set him up. Yeah, I, I like Bub. Let's do Bub. All the centers are gonna fall. Oh, it's crazy how that worked out. Yeah, I, I don't feel good about this. What? I mean, next, two, ne- these next are time, reasonable next time, picks. Next time, we'll have to run so the computer picks for the other teams. Okay. We could also do that quickly at the end. That's true. We could probably fire that up. Um, the Phoenix Suns. We're not going to give them Bronny, even though no. I think that's totally possible. Do we want to try and give them a drop big who can space the floor here? I'm going to torture you. <laughs> Mike Budenholzer. I know. It's a bud team. That's the worst part. I actually – I'm going to go against the grain. This guy has been mocked as more of a second round guy. Ryan Dunn. Ryan oh. Dunn. They need a perimeter stopper. They need a drop coverage guy. And I think Nurt can maybe do it on defense. We'll see. Or they could find a vet. But I, I don't know who on their team is chasing guys around screens. Like Okogi is there, but I think Dunn could be even better and has to have more offensive upside because Okogi just has none. Yeah. Bro, this fans vote death chart is crazy. They got Saban Lee, Devin Booker, <laughs> Kevin Durant, Bull Bull, Nurkic, with Bradley Beal being the fourth string shooting guard. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't know what they would do. They, they did not cook with this. No, absolutely. Uh, shout out to Udoka Azabrike, who I believe the Jazz took with Donovan Mitchell. On the, oh no, they took Donovan. They took him with someone, a star on the board. Yeah, they. Oh, I forget who it was. Was it Murray? No, it wasn't Murray. Uh, it, was a, it was rough. Um, but yeah, I think I think you need defense here. I could see them if they take where I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be very upset. I'd be a little surprised. Just like you, you don't love Nurkic, but you do have him. Like he's an NBA center. Like your best. Well, defensive he's also player. not a bud pick. Who? Or he is a bud pick. Who done? No, uh, where? 
Oh yeah, would would Bud take a guy who can't shoot at all? Like that's the thing. I, I kind of feel like maybe you know who's a Bud guy? Oh my god, who? you know this would be perfect. Cool. Cole. Oh no, I don't think they have. They need a point handle. guard. No, they don't. Yes, they do. What do you mean they don't need a point guard? They absolutely do need a point guard. I think Devin Booker should be their point guard. I think Devin Booker is best suited to not be the point guard. Not saying compared to the rest of the guys on the team. I'm saying like... like, You're not going to start him, are you? I mean, maybe not, but at least you have that option. I I don't think they can afford that I think Kolek is a bud pick. No. Oh, maybe it's a bud pick, but that's not what I'm doing as GM of the Suns. Okay, James Jones, what are you doing? I'm trading the pick, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, Kevin McCullough Jr. is a senior. I'm just gonna throw that. Deron Holmes as a junior. Bud loves older guys. Kind of makes some sense to me. We got Bobby Portis right here. It worked great for me in Milwaukee. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah, it did. An athletic big who can shoot a little bit. I mean, like we don't want to mess with. I didn't get Darvin Ham. We don't want to mess with Ware's attitude issues. I'm not going to get through to him. I'm going to talk about wineries. He's going to say, Coach, I can't even drink wine yet legally. Deron Holmes, none of these concerns, good motor, also big, can't drink wine shoots. Legally. But that's fine. He's a junior. Oh, he, he might, might be able to. Yeah. I forgot how old he is. What do you think about Holmes? I think Holmes would get, be a, he's, he's 21. He's good. Yeah. God, these kids are born in 2002 and they're old. Oh, oh are they go Terrence Shannon Jr.? I, I don't know. They shouldn't. They should. I mean, they might actually go. Should we? Should we give them brownie? No, we should. Where not is give he? Them here? How far down do I have to go? Oh God. Is he even? Oh, Juan, Juan Nunez, who said he interview with the Bucks, is at fifty five. He's at sixty here. Oh God, where is? All he? right, where, where are we going for the Suns? Again, I literally think Kolek is a good pick for them. Like, I think they need like a point guard, like at least an option. You know what? I, I've overruled you on some. Let's go, Tyler Kolek. Let's draft the old guy. Let's do it. Bud pick. That it is a bud pick. It is a. It, it doesn't you, help with it's, Dante. Yeah, it's a bud pick. Oh my god. What am I wrong? No. Well, I mean, they didn't only take. Did they? He was like the one. He was like the one bud guy pick, right? Yeah, it's and all he played him right away. Yeah. Well, Marjan. I don't know if Marjan was a bud pick. Well, he was there. I mean, he had had influence at that point for sure. For sure. sure. Regardless, that the Bucks are on the clock. The Bucks are on the clock. I, just, I don't like, even have a good one. To, I mean, some people like Ryan Dunn. I, I think it's obviously Ware or Holmes here. I think it, I think it's crazy that it just so happened that Kella Ware is here. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I can't even give you a good like devil's advocate pick at this point. No, I mean like, like I don't I don't see one that makes more sense. I think it's I think it's I mean you could convince me on Holmes. Yeah, it's probably just him. But I think it's, it's just the attitude thing. But I think Ware is a better fit, and I'm willing to take. You got we got Darvin now. Yeah, we got we Darvin. got the player. Who's mess with Darvin. Darvin can get through to anyone. Darvin's going to put those big mitts. He's taking them out of his pockets. He's not stressed oh, about he's, coaching he's, he's, the Lakers. He's out of the pockets. He's out of the pockets. The mitts are going on the shoulders. He's saying, "Listen, Kellel, lock in." And then we'll be like, "You're right, coach. You're right. You're right. You're right." And then coach. he's going to go work with Vin Baker. The expert big man developer. Yeah, you know what? Let's Kello. This is a dream. This it it truly is. Like a seven footer who can who can play defense, who can move, who can be yeah. a solid role man and can shoot. This is perfect. It is. Um the Knicks are on the clock. The New York. A lot of Knicks I've I've seen this as Evie's floor. Uh, people like this for Evie. 24 yeah. uh, 24 25. They have two in a row, but I think I'm just trying to think of what the Knicks need. I mean, they I think could use a backup big. They I know, could use gonna, Eves Missy here. But here's the thing: they're going to re-sign Hartenstein. Mitchell Robinson should be healthy. Yeah, Achua could be gone. Interesting Bucks option if they need bigs. Very probably make probably will make too much. I oh, never know actually. No, but I think they they keep Hartenstein. Yeah, and Mitch uh, Robinson's still under contract, so you don't have to worry about that. Yep, at least for another year ish. Uh, yeah, but I think oh, hold on, I've got a scout here. Oh boy, is it Sophie time? <gasps> oh, I picked her up funny. She didn't like it. Uh oh. Can't oh, be doing that to now. Sophie. It's a Sophie sighting. Everyone, go check out the she, YouTube. You can see Sophie her wagging her tail. She's okay. Aw. She said she likes the wear pick. I was gonna ask, what does Sophie think of the wear pick? 
She thinks it's positively terrific. Amazing. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> okay. I love it. But yeah. for the Knicks, I think I don't even know if center like you need a center. I don't know if you do either. Like, what do you think? Like, obviously, you're you're hoping for a healthy Julius Randle this year. Like, you or have to trade him. Oh yeah, or you trade him. Uh, you have Bronson on their contract. You got Dante under contract. I mean, you hope. I mean, hopefully, OG resigns for them. Like, yep. Uh, I think that's the assumption going in with the trade. I mean, you got Josh Hart under contract. You got all of these guys under contract. If Bogey's gone. That's fine. Whatever. You know. Yeah. Same with Burks. Same with Barks. So I think you just need you need a bench is what you need. Exactly. Which is why maybe you go Furphy. Yeah, I think one of the Kansas guys for sure. I think if you go Furphy, you're able to get like a good a good solid bench wing option, so you don't have to play Josh Hart the entire series. Although they might anyway. They they still will. Tibbs is gonna Tibbs. All right, I like Furphy. Let's lock that in, and now we have to do this again. They're on the clock again. Okay. So what do you continue to do here if you're if you're on the clock again and you're the New York Knicks? I, mean, I consider Deron Holmes here. I also consider Ryan Dunn because I think he's a big Tibbs guy. I think Ryan don't Dunn think is a big Tibbs could guy. have enough defenders. I think you go Ryan Dunn here. I think yeah. it might be a reach, but I, I think you do it. I like it too. Just being able to get like a versatile mix of defenders in there. Yeah, I think that's good for Tibbs. Uh, yep. We're back to the Zards. The Wizards. Oh, this worked out amazing, dude. I think we sprint to get Eves Missy here. We don't have a franchise big man. No, you you get we have a huge here, hole. Yeah. We just traded Gafford. We considered bigs with our top pick. We got Stefan Castle then, so we're not getting or Holmes or a shooter. But I think I, think I like Misi a little more. Yeah. I think I want the defensive, the really scalable defensive player. I love Misi here, so let's grab him. Let's slid do down to twenty six. Oh, I think the Wizards. I mean, you know, with the two pick, it's really a toss up. But Castle and Misi, I think you feel great about that. Absolutely, which is the good thing about this draft being so weird is you can you can have picks so far apart and you're still happy about it. Yeah, uh, the Timberwolves were not taking Duran Holmes. That's for sure. No. <laughs> um, Kevin McCuller as just kind of an older guy who could maybe play sooner rather than later on the wing. I think makes some sense. Like you'd love a guard, but there's really just not many left. Yeah, there really isn't that many left. Do they reach for Terrence Shannon, the POS? I don't know. There's not really anyone else who's – Jalen Tyson out of California is a little interesting. Uh, Kaishan George? Or Kaishan George. Yeah, does he handle it all? I mean, he can. I don't think he wants the ball in his hands too much. Well, I mean, they're not going to put it in his hands a bunch. I, I just think guard's probably a need here. Conley's getting older, but there's not a true point. I mean, if they had, if, like, if they had like traded up to snag Collier as he fell, that'd be pretty fun. Get yeah. Collier behind Mike Conley for like a year, however long he has left on his deal. Two years. And in general. Yeah. To play. <laughs> yeah, that's not just in general. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Kaishan George here. I mean, like Bobby Clintman, like I don't know if you want the big. I, I don't mind Jalen Tyson, who I think is like an intriguing wing. But they, they're pretty stocked. I mean, there's not a lot of big needs here. No, they're a good team. There's a reason they made it to the Western Conference Finals. Like, Yeah. I think Holmes is the last. I mean, you got Gobert, Towns, and Nas Reed, I think, are pretty locked in. I would not want a true big. But I like Kaishan George. Yeah. Upside like, pick. Like, you don't have to play Kyle Anderson. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah, like, let's, let's do George. Boom. All right. Who's on the clock now? 28. The Nuggets. The Nuggets. Oh, boy. Again, another pretty dang good team. Yeah. What do they need? Just two way players? I think uh, so. Backup I... big? Oh, Deron Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. This is Holmes. I mean, Zeke Nachi couldn't play. They were trying to use DeAndre Jordan. I think DeAndre Deron Holmes falls here. Really nice pairing with Jokic. And then without Jokic, you still have spacing at your big spot. Yep. I think it's a Holmes team. That's a home run for them too. I feel great it's a about Holmes this for run. Holmes run, nice. Nice. Uh the back Jazz the are back on the clock. So we've just given them swings. This guy, Pacom Dadier, I've seen him mocked in the first round higher than this. Another kind of like French swing wing. Jalen Tyson, and then Bobby Clintman. Uh, so we took Topic at 10. So we took a point guard. We don't know how much he's going to be able to play. I mean, you're probably just going best available slash whoever you feel best about here, right? I mean, I, I could really see Utah picking Baylor Shireman. We're not going all the way down to Baylor Shireman. He's 39 on the consensus board. I thought you were going to say he's 39 years old. <laughs> no. Maybe. He's 26 on this one. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, right. top on here is Kevin McCullough Jr. And then Bobby Clintman. I like Bobby here. I can see Bobby. Bobby's top here. He's a rangy wing. Yeah. Big wing. 6'10". So it's just like, let's see what we've got. I think so. I think that's fine. All right, let's take Bobby here. Bobby and Toby. Uh, the Celtics are on the clock. They need nothing. They need nothing. Can we take away this pick for just the yeah the the trades they made this past offseason? Yeah, I feel like they shouldn't be allowed Give to Give it to Portland. Picks. They deserve this pick. Oh, they have a severe need at point guard, power forward, and center, according to Oh, man, one. you know, like. Point guard is, uh, this is so funny. This, this is, is so funny. The so center funny. depth chart, Luke Cornett, Al Horford, Mimi Escada. <laughs> They're like, yeah, Porzingis is our four, you know. Power forward, Porzingis. They're Xavier starting Tillman, Pritchard over Drew. <laughs> Combin Gailey. Yeah. They're also not starting Jalen. It's Peyton oh, Pritchard, yeah, Derek not White, Jalen Jason Tatum, Porzingis, and Luke Cornett. The Celtics. 2K ass <laughs> starting lineup. I mean, if this was your starting lineup, you would definitely need help at you point guard. Any, any position. Any position, really. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, man. I think bench bench depth is something. They probably need. just like two-way bench players. Yeah. I mean, where's Kevin McCuller on your board? I think like the vet player. Jalen Tyson I like too. I could see Kevin McCuller. He seems like a Boston Celtics type player. Let me just see how well how well did uh, Jalen Tyson shoot. Because I do think they, they want all shooters, right? Like They do. At least on the wing. Jalen Tyson shot 36% last year, 40% the year before. 19 points, six. Yeah, I think I, I kind of like Tyson a little. I don't like McCullough much. They like their I'm running, count, out, guys. I'm, I'm running out of players I like. That's a good point. Was that Jalen went there? Yeah. Let's let's take the Cal guy. If you're if you're on board, I'm fine with it. We're back with the the Toronto Raptors now for the first pick of the second round. We're almost done. Daddy, a? the swing, the wing swing. Yeah, I can see it. DJ Wagner or the the Kentucky guys are way down here. Yeah, like a Justin Edwards. Yeah, we, we took Collier, so we took a, a guard. But yeah, I don't I don't hate Daddy A here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Just another big wing. He fits. I have he no fits idea. We're gonna get the Bucks. He fits the Raptors so much. We, we shouldn't have. We should have just done first round. I don't know enough of these guys. The Jazz again. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Do we just give them a color here? Uh, sure. He's top on every board. Baylor Shireman is top on this board. Oh my god. Uh, maybe the Bucks will take him. I have no idea who they take here. Okay, so who are we doing with the Raptors? McCuller? Oh yeah, I picked uh, I picked McCuller. Okay, and then now we have the Bucks, the final pick of this mock draft here. Yeah. So what, what do we think here? I think we go... Do you go... So we got our big. We got Kyle we got and do you so just I don't go, think we need do you just go one. wing? I think you probably just go best available just because it's like, who are these people? You know what I mean? <laughs> the meme of Patrick coming home. Who are these people? And seriously. Uh, so let's see. Bro, Leaky Black is making scouting reports. What the heck? Oh, so DJ Wagner just really was not able to shoot threes. Uh, Justin Edwards was a little better. Do you think they go the Chris Livingston route here and take a Justin Edwards? Yeah, I think that's interesting to me. Otherwise, um, Terrence Shannon Jr., who I just don't want to pick, so I'm not going to look him up. Otherwise, we've got Dylan Jones from Weber State. We talked about picking uh, picking to make a guy in your team happy. The Weber State kid would be doing that. <laughs> he did not shoot well from three. But he was 20, 10, and 5 with two steals per game. 54% from two, 32% from three. But the free throws in the 80s. 6-6 six, six forward. The worst Big sky part, player of the year. The worst part of this is, is I could definitely see the Bucks taking Shireman here. I don't know if I could. Not I could. anymore. Back in the day, maybe. I mean, like, I could see them doing it. If you want to replace, like, this is not the comparison I'm trying to make here. If you wanted to replace like a Pat Connaughton and you just say, yeah. okay, I want a guy who's been like around the block. Like he's a senior. He's he's a wing. Ooh. Like, do How you about want... uh, Gonzaga transfer to Wake Forest, Hunter Salas, a 6'5 guard. 
He scored is 18 and 4 with 2.5 assists, but shot 40% from three. But he was a big riser. Didn't shoot well, but didn't play as much with, with Gonzaga. Yeah. Do you think He's the Bucks more of a point guard? Do you think the Bucks here at 33 really take like a younger prospect, or like a, a project, or more of like a a play now type of guy? I mean, is there going to be the room in the rotation for a play now type of guy? I mean, who knows how it's going to shape up? You know, a- AJ Mitchell, by the way, is like kind of the same boat as Sal. It's a little shorter, but like big uptick in shooting, but didn't shoot as well earlier. Um. Maybe they go Chomchi here. Chomchi, the big swing. Oh, actually, you know what? You know who I like here? Who? I like a couple of the older guys. Actually, he's not as old. I like Igadaro. Ooh, Oso. Okay. Get the big. He did work out for the Bucks. I like Oso. I I don't hate Alex Caravan. I would prefer him to Shireman. Yeah. The uh, the spacer from UConn hit some huge shots in the national title game. What if they take Bronny? I would be a little disappointed. But what if that meant LeBron? Then it would be worth it. But in the moment, I would be very disappointed. <laughs> what um, if they took the pick and then LeBron puts on, like he just tweets out, Milwaukee. <laughs> that'd be Well, she probably would, but I don't know if it would mean anything. Oh, but I we would get some good content out of it. Oh, yeah. We always get good content out of things. Uh, I don't want to do Shireman. I would rather do Igadaro or Caravan. I'm fine with either. Should we go with the Marquette guy? Who, which do you really think would be the better pick? Uh, can Can Igodaro give me a little bit of what I wanted from De Silva? No, a little bit. The skilled forward. No, but the, like he he can do that. It just has to be within like the restricted area. <laughs> then I'm kind of leading Caravan. Yeah, that's fine. I don't okay. love Oso as a Bucks pick. Okay, let's do Caravan, and we're done. So we here's it. the. The Bucks end up with oh no, now I'm, I went to the Blazers. Let's auto pick. Oh, this is gonna take forever. Oh, oh my god. Well they ended forever. up with Kello Ware. <laughs> yeah, they got Kello Ware and they got um they got Kello Ware and they got Alex Caravan from yes. UConn. We're at forty two here. The auto pick is very oh wait, can I change the speed? Or do I have to No, I can't change the speed. Okay. That's weird. I mean, we don't really need to recap the whole the whole draft. No, that's true. I mean, I think but, if you're the Bucks here, I think you walk away happy. Oh wait, I can just scroll down. We're good. Oh, easy. So Sar Castle, Shepard, Dillingham were the top four, and then Risa Shea, Buzelis, Holland, Klingon. So the Spurs come away with Dillingham and Klingon, which is super fun. Connect to Memphis, who just got sniped on Klingon. Topic falls to ten. Saloon, Cody Williams, of course, to OKC, like everyone else does. Jacoby, Walter to the Kings. And then Devin Carter, Kyle Filipowski, Jared McCain, Zach Eady to the Lakers is probably our craziest pick. I don't think Trist- that's that crazy. I think it's a little crazy. I think they'd want a spacer. Tristan De Silva at 18 to the Magic is oh, maybe it is my crazy. heart. That's what KOC has. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, no, uh, he doesn't. He has Jared McCain. My bad. I I don't like that much. Isaiah Collier to the uh, Raptors was a fun one. Tyler Smith to the Cavs. Bub Carrington. Tyler Kolick to the Suns is up there. Kel Elware to the Bucks just so happened to fall that way. And then you say that like, but I mean, but it also like it worked out though. It did, but I think we were biased. But I also think it could work out though. It could. Johnny Furphy, Ryan Dunn, Eves Missy, Kaishan George, Deron Holmes to the Nuggets. I love Bobby Clintman, Jalen Tyson. Daddy A, Kevin McCullough, Alex Caravan is the Bucks' second pick. All right, real quick, we're way over time, but let's do, let's no, just see, pick. yeah, let's let's just pick for the Bucks. Full draft or oh, speed all the way up. Oh boy, all right, it's not on us, just so we don't have to wait forever. Okay, boom, boom, boom. I'm not gonna read it out live. The YouTube will see how everyone where everyone goes. Uh, Filipowski went 14. Sheesh. Uh, Ware went to the Raptors. And oh. De Silva went to the Pelicans. Oh, no. Uh, oh, this is brutal. Uh, okay, so... Oh, my goodness. I don't like this at all. I hope this isn't what happens. So I'll give you a quick recap. I won't do the whole thing. But Holmes went 16. Filipowski went 14. Missy went 17. Ware went 19. De Silva went 21. And then Tyler Smith went 22. 
So who did the book? I would say, well, we we pick for them. Oh, that's what we're doing. So we have twenty one now. I think they just what took all the consensus. That's kind of boring. So yeah, we have Bub Carrington, Johnny Furphy, Zach Eady, Kevin McCullough, Ryan Dunn, Kaishan George, Bobby Clintman, Jalen Tyson, Tyler Kolick. Oh, I don't like any of those. This is bad. This I is hope really it doesn't bad. turn out this way. Wait, let me let me look at something. Okay. Did I do um did I do team needs or did I do board? I don't know. Oh, I did standard. Let me try team need. Okay, let's we'll see, see what happens. Works. Yeah, this was because that was brutal. Didn't like that at all. <laughs> we just turned that one off. <laughs> we nope. restart that franchise. We're not doing mode. that one. <laughs> okay, Zachy just went fourteen. We're in business now. All right, Devin Carter on the board. Tristan De Silva on the board. The other bigs went. Um, who took? Oh, where went fourteen here? Did Portland they did it a big apparently. Sure. Filipowski went 13. Missy went 12. Oh, God. This one was crazy. Literally, this is – so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 were all centers. Adam Bona, who was like in the 50s, somehow went to LA here. Oh, my God. Um, but I think we That's go Tristan De Silva. Yeah, I think Tristan De Silva here is on the board. I think, also yeah. Tyler Smith. Or do you take Devin Carter? No, I mean, Devin Carter is probably the highest upside player there. Yeah, two-way guard, but he's so little. We talked about it. We won't I think you take guys. De Silva. Let's take De Silva. Let's see who falls to us. In this, this that is a ridiculous match. The, the, uh, the, the centers are going – like something about the center needs is clearly broken. Uh, no, who just went? Ryan Kalkbrenner. Seven-foot-one Creighton Blue Jays center just went 32 to the Jazz. This is broken. Yeah, it is. Ariel Huckporty from Germany went to the Wizards at 26. Oh, my a, God. A Day Mara from the Bruins went 25. The, the Knicks back-to-back took Jonathan Magbo and a Day Mara, who are both centers who I've never heard of before. This is – okay, fans vote. Like you're, this you're, is broken. The, here, I'll tell you what. The actual right, drafting Johnny, tool – Bucks get, Bucks get Johnny Furphy in the second round. Cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the actual drafting tool is nice, but the mock draft, terrible. Yeah, well, I team. I think the other one just did consensus board, I, and then there's also a chaos option. But I don't know what could be more chaotic. That that what that? Are you sure you didn't pick the chaos option? I did not. Ryan Dunn just went 58, I think, to the Lakers. Oh God, it's gonna have Kello Ware go number one on the chaos. I just what happens? I'm just gonna put in lottery. What does chaos do? Where is that here? It, oh, I was on team needs. Donovan Klingon, Topic, Sar. Castle. Oh, this isn't that crazy. De Silva six is a little crazy. I think Topic two is crazy. It's not that crazy. With a torn ACL? Partially. Hey, if it's torn, it's torn, man. Um, this one wasn't. I mean, Reese the Shade thirteen is actually, and Buzelis twelve. This is kind of crazy. Whatever. Whatever. That's our mock draft. Yeah, we did it. Like we actually we we did a proper mock draft rather than actually we simulating did. these. Yeah, so we will uh, we'll do some more. Maybe our, we can do big boards next week. Maybe we could. I think we, we said can do questioningly. Big yeah, yeah we, we've had some more experience now, so we'll bring our top bucks prospects and we'll talk about that. But we are at two hours, so I think we're good. That's here. crazy. This is the longest <laughs> pod we've had in a while. Yeah, I'm glad we, we were didn't ambitious do this at with the topics. Four a.m. tomorrow or something. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Or at, at nine a.m. and miss half the work day. Oh yeah, <laughs> not that we would ever do that. No. We, we'd miss our meetings for this. No, uh, no, no. Uh, but no, this was fun. Let us know what you think of the Bucks picks. I mean, like they could be all over the place. Uh, but yeah, let us know if you think we we missed something massive here in terms of these prospects. We probably did. Uh, yeah. But make sure to let us know. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. Uh, hopefully you're listening to it ad-free on the GSPM premium feed. You can sign up at gspm.info. Oh, yeah. Get all of these ad-free feeds. Uh, get our written content. Get exclusive pod GSPN after dark. That's the mm-hmm. exclusive pod. Uh, get some fun videos, all that fun stuff. Subscribe at gspn.info. But yeah, wherever you're listening to this, watching this on YouTube, podcast platform of choice, make sure you subscribe. Uh, yeah, check out all the links. Everything lives at gspn.info. Pod random, and we'll talk to you next time.